How do I change what his thing is? This is what? What his his because I am one of the moderators for his channel. Oh, so you might I... have to go into his um, photo control panel. I think, maybe. Where is that? Um, dashboard. So if you can actually manage it from your dashboard. Ah, okay. Okay, cool. Whoa. All right, this hopefully is coming live. Let's find out. Yeah, looks like we are. Looks like we are coming up. Cool. Just one moment here. Some technical difficulties. Is that a randomized race real quick? No, it's uh, vanilla. Uh, it would be nice if it's randomized, but unfortunately it's not. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Okay. Well, I also need to change my own. Okay, hopefully that will work. And then Kevin, can I change his as well? Yeah. Yeah, you can manage it. Yeah. Hello. All right. Let me uh, let me pop the camera on so there's a little bit more of a more of an idea of what's going on here. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. And welcome to Stunfest 2018. I am Softdrink117, joined here by Radical. Hello. And Icarus. Hello. So, I'm not sure exactly what's going on in the mainstream right now, but I guess we're about to find out. Okay. Looks like they're at a short break. Um, so the upcoming event is the first of two uh, Battle Garega score races between um, Eaglet and Plasmo, which should be pretty interesting to see. Um, I've been talking to both of them about this. I have some notes here. Let me try to pull this up. Um, so it sounds like right now they are, the commentators are uh, introducing the game, explaining a little bit of the kind of how to play, how it works, whatever. Um, of course, because this is somewhat a complicated system for people who are new. All right, cool. So, where do we start with this? How do we how do we des describe this game in like ten minutes to people who've never <laughs> played Gregor? Uh, 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 do you want me to I, go after you? You can start first. Okay. Well, obviously it's a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up. Um, it is quite famous among the uh, the shmups community in that it's actually quite complicated to play in a way there's a lot of rank system um, knowledge that is required by players um, for the most part though it's a very straightforward shoot 'em up um, main shot special weapon which is uh, fueled by bomb fragments and options which you can change the formation of um, you shoot things to gain points you get chip points obviously but you also get points by destroying things and also you get points by picking up medals um, and it's just a really long game overall. It's like 40 minutes long, but it's it is pretty pretty intense once you actually start getting into it because there's a lot that you need to micromanage, a lot that you need to control, and a lot that you need to know about before you actually step into serious play. So it's actually quite difficult, which is why this race is going to be quite exciting because these two guys are very very knowledgeable about what they play, um, and they're going head to head to see. What the best score is, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's technically described as a score race. Um, although talking to both of them about it, it, sounds like they're a little bit more interested in making it kind of a m more of a demonstration. Yeah. Um. So I guess getting into the the players and the run that we're about to see here. Um. So Eaglet has been playing since uh, playing Battle Garega since 2012. Uh, he took a break for military service for one year. And then started up back in earnest in 2014, been playing consistently since. 
Um, he is most concerned with this uh, with this run. Kind of prior to stage seven, he's going to be always on his last life for rank control purposes. Yeah. Uh, both players are playing Bornum. Uh, because Bornum is the most consistent ship for demonstration purposes. Yep, I agree with that. 100%. Yeah, I would agree too. And also, it's a very useful ship for general scoring. Yeah. Um, however, that means that any unplanned death uh, before roughly uh, nose two might cause some serious issues. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You definitely do not want to be dying at any point unplanned because um, those lives are generally used for score. Sometimes for rank management, but 100% for score, they'll be dying in places where they need to get bomb fragments in order to bomb targets, in order to get more points, to get lives. It's a, it's a cycle, basically. So every time you die, you should be getting points off that next life. It's, but if they die by accident, then they might possibly lose a lot of points, depending on where they die. So it's, it's going to be very tricky to manage. It's very nerve-wracking, actually, doing a demonstration because you're always on the knife edge. Um, yep. with Garaga. It's, yeah, especially with Bornum, you're always on the last life. Yeah, like Bornum requires it to be pushed very hard. Now, I mean, he can be, be, he can be played safely yeah. by just, you know, keeping one extra in stock. Yeah. But, like, with the way these guys are going to be playing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. And they get put on a show. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. consistency is key here. Yeah. Consistency is key, but when I was speaking to them the other day, they said they want to make sure that they've got in as much for entertainment purposes as possible. Yeah. So they're going to make this interesting. I'm hoping that they're not going to screw up doing it, but I trust these two to actually push very hard for this. It's going to be a very good game overall. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, they were telling me that they are, as opposed to like a speedrun race where one person is intentionally trying to beat the game more quickly than the other, they're actually going to try to synchronize their play as best they possibly can. Yeah. So if one player is you know, a couple seconds ahead coming into a boss, they might intentionally drag that out just so that they can both leave the boss battle at the same time. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, it should be pretty wild. Um, so coming back to my conversation with Eaglet, uh, he was saying he's a little bit nervous about the execution on the stage four metal rails. Uh, he feels quite consistent with it, but with Bornem, it's a little bit challenging just because he's so slow. Yes. Um, yes. So he feels pretty good about it, but every once in a while, it just doesn't quite work out. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like with the rails, is that when you bomb them, they could like they could all, all spawn, drop in one direction, or they could yeah. split off. Yeah. Yeah. The way and they break is random. Yeah. The way so, they break is random. So you want the one where it doesn't split off. You yeah. want one to all just yeah. straight. Right. Pretty and, much. Um, I think for that reason, some people would opt to go for like, you know, they bomb the rail, but they also bomb like the thing on the side. Yeah, they try to do that. The problem with Bornum is that with his bombs, like an area effect bomb. Yeah. Which means that it doesn't really matter where you place it. It's going to be random anyway. So you have to basically react to how it breaks. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be pretty tricky. I mean, I don't expect these guys to do the ghetto style of metal railing, but um, they're going to try for it. But I expect at least one of them to drop the medals at some point because that's generally how the metal rails go. Yeah. Um, yep. It's very hard to maintain them with Bornum. Very, very hard. <clears throat> um, then both players uh, expressed some concern about the opening of stage six. It sounds like both of them will be going for the suicide against oh, the uh, metal blimps at the opening of stage six. Yeah. Which puts a lot of pressure on execution for the turret wall and the later parts of the stage. Yeah. And also resource management before that because you need to ensure you've got enough lives to actually do it. Yeah. Um, and also the section before the blimps is a really difficult section to keep your medals in yes. Yes, because you've got those bombers that appear from the middle and the sides and it's really hard to actually maintain your metal chain there if you don't have a very specific method or route to do it. There are safe ways of doing it but they're pretty tricky to set up. Um, I would expect them to try to actually keep it, but if they lose it, then that's basically their score for stage six tanked. Basically. Yeah. Um, I think usually you get around about 1.5 to 2 million if you've got your medals there in stage six. Sounds about if right. If you lose it, it drops by a million straight away. So that's like one extend gone, basically. Yeah. So it's going to be very hard. If they drop the medals in stage six, they're going to struggle in stage seven, probably without resources. Um, but these two guys are very good at what they do, so I expect them to to do it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, was, I was watching them last night, and they both seemed quite consistent, quite competent. I mean, they were. Yeah, they you know, we, we were drinking beer while we were talking yeah. about the run. So. Yeah. 
It's funny because Eaglet's been playing for years, so he's already got the experience. Plasma only just came back to it like last year. Yeah, so... Um, but the funny thing is, he's been getting trained by Kamui. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, um, when I was in uh, Tokyo, he was also there. He was like coming up to the end of his stay there for like work purposes. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to be doing like this demonstration. I'm going against Eaglet uh, on stage at Stimfest. I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. Are you doing any practice? He's like, no. So I was like, you should probably get trained by Kamui over there. Yeah. And yeah. She'll help you out. And she's been helping him out quite a lot. Oh, yeah, awesome. So I think she's given him quite a lot of pointers. And that's probably why his scores like suddenly gone straight up to like an F. Basically, yeah. Which is yeah, pretty wow. cool. It's very very high score so these guys are very very good um, they've been pushing it quite hard like I mean admittedly I've been quite lazy at it but these two have been really going hard at it and they've got that little rivalry going now so we yeah. can see those scores going higher eventually well so that was that was another interesting thing when I was kind of interviewing them to prep for this um, Plasma said that he's been playing Gorega since 2006 yeah um, and he started with uh, with wild snail just going for a just going for a 1cc yeah uh, he said he was actually playing iron mackerel which kind of surprised me because kind of the, the meme ship is golden bat yeah um, then he's to gain for some score play and actually got a G7. So. Yeah, he was one of the first to get a, like over an FG score with gain on the forum. Yeah, and then uh, and then he took a break for a while um, and then started up with Bornham. Yeah, um, and that then around fault. that time, it sounds like he had pretty much all of the Western high scores for this game. He did, yeah. Um, and then Eaglet turned up. And, and then Eaglet showed up. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and took back all of them. Yeah, and so it, it sounds like Plasmo may be trying to take them back. He and, is, yeah, uh, <laughs> he is. Today is, is one step on that journey. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I'm actually curious to see who's going to come out on top. I expect Eaglet to, just because he's the he's had been more at it for the past few years than Plasma has, but Plasma has that determination to actually go for it, so mm. I think it'll be a very good race overall. I, I mean, I'm personally kind of rooting for Eaglet as well. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone is at the moment. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like when I saw him at Sunfest uh, 2016, I mean, he was my inspiration to get into Garega in the first place, and I watched him. I was like, who's this guy playing Garega and, like, kicking ass? And it was him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it sounds like they were pretty close. I mean, it seems that uh, uh, Plasma's personal best with Bornham is an F1. Yeah. And Eaglet's is a G1. Yeah. So they are, you know, not necessarily within spitting distance, but within yeah. a very good run yeah. margin of error. Pretty much, yeah. I would say they're both pretty much equivalent because a G is like, it's, it's a grind out score, basically. You need to keep playing and playing and playing, and eventually you'll get it. I would say they're both pretty much at F in terms of skill at the moment so uh, yeah oh hey yum you uh you have any have any words you're a little cut off there if you want to they are doing some technical stuff okay they need the senior the video senior and all the stuff and it's gonna come soon okay okay cool excellent cool. yeah sounds like they're uh they're doing some <laughs> oh yeah i i i think we may have noticed <laughs> what did you say? Yo, what did you say? Yeah, I told uh, I told them to tell Eaglet that Kamui is in the chat. Yeah, I oh. see that too. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, the the mentor watches the student, so to speak. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows. Oh um, yeah. To address some quick comments from chat, uh, why are we not using the STG Weekly channel? We had some minor technical issues um, getting the stream to broadcast to the, t the STG Weekly channel using the uh, multi-stream service that I'm using right now. So hopefully we'll have those resolved by later today or before tomorrow's broadcast. But in the meantime, I figured it was better to have it here than to not have it at all. And we got our uh, players. Hey, oh, looks like we have a word from the players. She's watching. Yes. Yeah, she's you, in the we, chat right now. you guys want to say any few words before you start, or are you just going to go? Yeah, I can say a few words. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. And here's Eaglet. <laughs> Plasma, anything from you? We're going to try our best. <laughs> Humble. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it'll be good. We are ready, guys. Yes, it's your time. Yeah. Good. All right. I'll kick some ass. We will. <laughs> He's going to fucking suck. Yeah. Okay. Place your bets, guys. Yeah, yeah. Place your bets now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh god. <clears throat> so yeah, at this point, um, 
I guess that's it. They're they're going to get started. We're waiting on a, a clean signal from the uh, from the broadcast desk. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh boy, yeah, this should be really cool. Yeah, I'm, I've never seen anyone race at this game before. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting new format that I think we've only just put together for this. Yeah. I mean, obviously with these two guys being pretty equivalent in skill, yeah. um, it's going to be very close. So it's actually, it's interesting to see like, and plus there's a lot of technical things going on with it. So yeah, absolutely. Um, we can see quite a breadth of knowledge and a depth of knowledge as well being demonstrated up there. It'll be very interesting to watch, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, I, I think part of the challenge with it, because I know there was a score race at one point uh, for, uh, what was it, Eskatos. Yes. Um, and I, I think part of the challenge is it's hard to find a game that enough people know at a high enough level yeah. um, that you can actually have a race in in the shoot 'em up community. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially because consistency is also a huge challenge with these games. Yeah. I think we're ready. Maybe? I'm. Sorry. I'm yeah. still not seeing. This is this is the outfit I'm getting from them, so it's still not, not quite ready. But it sounds it sounds like they're hyping something up. So. Yeah, they got some. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they got something going on. Yep. Yeah, this is good. This is very I wish good. I could. Uh, I wish I could see any of it. We uh. The stage is directly behind us here, so unfortunately we don't actually get eyes on the players or on anything that's going on up front. I hear some uh, metal slug though. Yeah, I can hear metal slug. Oh yeah, they've got a, a speed run going on up there. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's interesting the the background environment that we get here. There's uh, you know quite a, quite a lot going on. Yeah. Just the view from the. Yeah. From the stand here, we have like a Street Fighter V tournament and a few other fighting games down here. There's, uh, I think, Capcom Cup up in the upper right, and then um, there's some some speed running. And it, it was Sonic Adventure 2 earlier, and now it looks like it's Metal Slug X. So. Nope, we got a reset. <laughs> <laughs> reset. Yeah, it's starting to fill up quite nicely now. I think all the fighting game players are coming in. Yeah, it's getting pretty uh, busy. Yeah, pretty busy. <clears throat> so is that the actual capture we're seeing? Yes, that's the that's the raw. From the no, I mean, like, which one's the stream? Scene? Huh? Which one is the stream? Scene? This is this is what's out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> technical difficulties guys would not be not be an SDG weekly stream if there were not technical difficulties uh, here we go oh it looks like that. they are picking up the players are taking their seats so to speak all right yeah, I think they're introducing the actual the run now so yeah <coughs> Do we have a view of the crowd or? Um, unfortunately, we don't. Oh, okay. That was one of the things I was most bummed out about about being behind the stage. Is I actually brought an extra webcam just so I could have a view of the crowd. Yeah. And uh, not quite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I was out there, um, I think all the all the uh, little like beach seats were taken. Yeah. yeah. You know the beach seats they have on the floor. Th those are all taken. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's a, it's a relatively full house. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got some some cab action. Yeah, I'm giving him the giving him the scoop. Yeah. All right. I'm actually hoping this kind of format takes off because it'll be interesting to see more of this kind uh, in the future. Like you know, head-to-head -head scoring runs. Yeah, it, absolutely. It truly would. It should. Yeah. It truly would be interesting. You know, speed runs do it all the time with the yeah. races and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It'd be really interesting to see SDGs do it as well. Yeah. Because if you get like two players of equivalent skill together, sit them in the f yeah on the stage and have the crowd watch, it's actually quite exciting because you can see quite clearly that both players are, you know, trying to do the same thing and. It might <laughs> 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 but yeah. I, I agree. Uh, yeah. uh, to be quite honest, I have absolutely no idea how to commentate this. Yeah. Uh, so that, that'll be an interesting challenge. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here with me. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, uh, 
I actually we'll wanted to see, to see the, this. Yeah, we'll be able to see the minute differences. I think it's good because we're both like a Bornum ABC players. Yeah, definitely. And we I both think know what, what Bornum does. Yeah, it's, it's actually interesting that there's this small Garriga community that forms around Bornum because everyone yeah. seems to play him now. It's pretty cool. Well, to be honest, it's because I think he's just the easiest and best character just to learn the basics and exactly. just learn everything about the game. That's what I've always said to people when they come to like play Garriga. It's like, you know, Bornum is just the easiest one to pick up. Just go and learn him because he's consistent. He's like, He's not too fast, but he's not too slow. Yeah. He's, he controls very nicely. He's got a good attack power. He's just very comfortable play, to play as well. And his scoring is consistent, especially on the mad balls, on like you know other things. It's actually quite easy to play with. So it's definitely a character that people have actually started to pick up on and think, yeah. you know, actually he's actually not a bad character to play as. I might as well learn him. And you see, gradually, the amount of people playing Born is like increasing and actually doing very well with him as well, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of people tend to go towards Gain, for example, or, you know, Golden Bat, because they're like, well, I'm not going to say the meme characters, but they're like characters that people know the best from like super run, um, super score players and stuff. But Bornum is where most players tend to go because it's just consistent, I find. Yeah. 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 Well, in a game that has so many variables as Garega, yeah. you know, when you have. When you have any character that gives you some stability, something to base on, especially if you're if you're trying to push for score, yeah. where you want to see that incremental improvement, yeah. I mean, it's very hard to measure incremental improvement if one run you get, you know, 700k from the flamingos, and yeah. the next run you get 200k from the yeah, flamingos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with that consistency, it's easy to continue to build on top of your current routes. It's just what I like about him. I mean, Gain is don't get me wrong. Gain is actually a really good character to play once you learn his nuances. It's yeah. the same with the Golden Bat as well. The Golden Bat is like very particular about different things. Uh, but with Bornem, you can just sit down, blast out a good run, and you can see exactly how well you've done by the, you know, how high your score is. Uh, unlike the other ships where it's like, have I done well enough? I don't know. My score seems to be somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's something like that, yeah. But I like it that way. And it's nice that people are starting to come to Garrigo and think, okay, I can actually play this character. Jump yeah. straight into it. Yeah, exactly. It's been good. That's been very good. <laughs> Miyamoto being the best? Yeah. I mean, I'd say for Miyamoto, like, I think he's great for, like, survival. And I guess scoring as well, but yeah. he does require a lot more... Uh, he plays so differently from everyone else. Yeah, he does. He's yeah. a lot more about tick manipulation. Yeah, he is, yeah. And stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, so um, what exactly is going on up here? Let's see. They're doing some, something. Some kind of a strategy meeting. <laughs> They're going to... Up here. Psyching each other out. No, no, no I think here. they're strategizing oh. at the moment. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're just giving each other a death stare. <laughs> <Talking shit. laughs> this this is the real the, the, the real down. race right now. Yeah, the stare down is going on right now. <laughs> the mind game. They're outplaying each other in their head. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how, that's what's gonna happen. Already gone through the whole run a thousand times right now. Just what we've been talking about. Yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, I think they're introducing it at the moment, so... Yeah. And that on the stage is, uh... That's Humar and, uh, Alphabari, right? Yeah, Alpharabi's up there, yeah. yeah. Alpharabi, my bad, yeah. yeah. And Matthew, I think, as well, yeah. Ah. Uh, is up there as well. Okay. Yeah, he's, uh... It's actually surprising, I didn't expect to see him here. Because, um, he used to help manage and, you know, get the players over here. And then he, he was, like, in Japan. He used to live in Japan, but he comes over every so often. But I think last year he moved back to France, which is why I didn't see him when I was in Tokyo last year. Uh -huh. um, and I wasn't expecting him to see him here. We only saw him like in the cafe this morning. He's like, oh, it's you. It's like, oh my God, what are you doing here? So it's like pretty nice to see him, like him and him and uh, his wife Keiko here, like, you know, just taking in the event because the past few years they've been helping out and they've been pretty stressed about it. Yeah. So this year they're just here to chill out, which is really nice. It's been pretty cool catching up with them. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely imagine how stressful it must be to work behind the yeah, scenes at an event like this. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got something going on here. Oh, here we go. We have our uh, <laughs> we have our versus fighting overlay. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. All right. It looks like they are switching to the game scene. So any moment now, we could begin. Yes. Oh, boy. So it looks like Plasmo is on the left and Eaglet is on the right. I think, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be that way. Yeah, the, the labels are slightly cut off on some of them, though. Yeah, let me uh, hang on one moment. 
Yes, it looks like it is that way. It's just a name, though. There we go. Ah, okay. So that's that's problematic. Yes, I I see what's going on here. Uh, I guess I guess we're not gonna be on the stream, guys. Ah, it's all right. Wait, are we not? <laughs> Whoa there, that's a little freaky looking. Whoa. Yeah. Oh no, they've got probably the stick held down, so it's like yeah. essentially. Yeah. There we go. I know what they're doing. All right, here we go. Off here we go. We go. One of ABC. Yeah, so for those that don't know, the first aim in stage one is to pick up as many bomb fragments as possible without losing any bomb fragments. You got all of them there. Yeah, yep. exactly. You also want to power up um, mostly, I think, to max or as close to max as possible um, because you get more points off the boss by um, you know picking up four options and full shot power. Yep. I think they look like they're rank controlling those, so they're not going for that exactly. Um, but they're not going to be bombing at all in this stage. Um, they're going to try and suicide twice as well on the boss so that they've got three and a half bombs to um, starting stage two which is key for a scoring trick that's coming up Ooh, Eagle, what are you doing dude I, yeah <laughs> it looks like Eagle's gonna set up for the uh yeah they're going the for power the, up up yeah, here the big power up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. by the time it gets there yep. boom big yep. power up um, plasma's oh, oh, lost it yeah oh. plasma didn't get it so he's gonna be a little bit behind i guess it's not massive though the point difference is negligible yep. but what's it's key it's something to do in stage one yeah exactly that's all it is. yeah yeah exactly so they're both, I would say, optimally powered up um, for the time being. They're both even on medals, it looks like. Yep. He Quite. was slightly ahead in terms of timing. It looks like he started a you know, yeah. half second before. So. Exactly, yeah. So they're both taking out the tail turret, and then they're going to be picking off everything else. The nice thing about Bornem is you don't have to do any shenanigans with piercing shot because it doesn't have a piercing shot, yep. which yeah. is nice. So your scoring on bosses is actually very consistent here. The aim here is to get around 580,000 points or higher, if possible. Mm. Um, and and that involves picking off all three of the front propellers, all four of the back propellers, all of the small turrets and chipping the wings off completely and also destroying the main body of the turret. Um, they haven't done the front turret yet. I think they're going to be going for that now, yeah. Yep, there you go. There we go. Very yeah, interesting plasma choice. going for the nose. Yeah, Eaglet's doing the chip milking method though. <coughs> so well, he's, he's got an extra half second to spare. Yeah, there we go. So Come get on, get that go, nose, yeah. yeah. So you can see a small amount of difference in score here. Eaglet's actually 20,000 points ahead because yep. of just because of the shot power level. Um, like I mentioned before, it's close to max that you want to be in. When I was in Tokyo last year, Kamui said that there's a little trick a born and player will do and that they'll intentionally game over before the full shot power turns up in stage one so that they get the full shot power after the ah, next minute. Yeah, so because of course the... That's so good. The yeah, so they get continues. the full shot power for that. And the, that's what pushes them over 600,000. It's a really sweet, tricky little thing to do. It's not something I would do because that's extremely high level, but it's something that a high level player, world record player will still, do. Yeah, look, basically yep. near equals. Yeah, wow, five, 597 versus 614. They're yep. still within 20K of each so other. Stage two. Yeah. They're going to set up to get more medals from this blimp. Yep. And usually they'll do it by suiciding in a certain place. So he goes suicides down there. This is so dangerous to do, though. And oh. hopefully set up. No, he's not going to set up for it, but... Yeah. I think Plasma's... Do oh, game over. Oh, oh okay. Yikes. Well, let's see. I don't I don't know if they have any... any re oh, yeah. Okay, looks like they're going to go for a reset since it was so early reset. into the, oh, into the run. Oh, Plasma. <laughs> Come on, Plasma. Get that nerves out there. The nerves. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That's what it is. It's just a, it's just a nerves credit. Oh, you have you have your you have your bad coin. Yeah. You get everything out there. You did bad in front of an audience. All right, now now go there, kick some ass. I'm actually glad I'm not up there because I get really bad stage fright when I'm doing a demonstration. Yeah, same. <laughs> so one thing I noticed too, I think Eaglet is doing 15 hertz or something. Yes, he's on yeah. 15. E um, Plasma will be on 12 for rank control. Yeah. Um, Eaglet is going for 15 for scoring. Yes. Um, and then around about stage six, they'll push it to 20. Yes. Or even 30. Um, because at that point, rank is irrelevant. It's going to be topped out at some point anyway. So, but uh, before that, they don't want to be any higher than 15. Um, 15, yeah. Yeah. Now, the reasoning for the rank, the, the, the significance of auto fire is that um, <coughs> the higher auto fire, the higher your per frame rank goes up. That's correct. So yeah. something like 15 is means you need to be even more diligent with your rank control exactly, compared yeah. to 12. Yeah, um, uh, 12 is like, oh, come I think, on. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, with 12 auto fire, it's like 1.5 times base per frame rank, but 15 is like double. I, yeah. 20 is 
three times and uh, 30 is four times per frame. Yeah. So if you accidentally jack your auto fire up to maximum, you're dead basically because rank just crawl goes straight up uh, much faster than you can control it. Um, yeah, for the first boss, it's essentially the same thing as before. Picking off turrets, picking off propellers, and so on and so forth. Yep. Uh, but yeah, rank control is actually a really big thing in this. You need to be very diligent in auto fire management, um, picking up only what you need to pick up, and basically suiciding at points, um, ensuring that you have enough lives spare for other things as well. Most of the time, you'll be around about one stock or zero stock, and then waiting to get your next extend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, interestingly enough, there is a route that you can take in this um, in terms of you know resource management, but there is a little bit of flexibility in stages as well. So these guys know everything about those strategies. So yes. I expect them to have at least some form of backup in this. I, I would say that one of the bigger things for rank control is just how many options you have. Because options do also add, like I think, per yes. frame rank yeah. as well. Um, yeah. No options add not to per frame. They add like a little one-time increase per bullet fired. Oh, okay. and, and of also, course, the pickup when you actually collect them. Yep, yeah, and also the one-time pickup front pickup, as you said, yeah, as well. So you actually have to be very careful with what you're picking up in terms of options as well, because um, one thing that uh, I mentioned to these guys a while back is that when you suicide, if you pick up all four of the options again, there was no point in actually suiciding because yeah. it completely negates all of the rank that you've just you know reduced that's yeah. how crazy that's how much options actually increase rank in this game yeah it's very dramatic yeah so in most cases in this case obviously you saw they had four when the suicide they'll go back down to two in some stages they'll only be going down to one or even zero so let's see if they actually yeah, get plasma this done not equally doing completely different things it's very interesting Plasma, what are you doing? Don't cross Whoa, it. Oh, okay, okay. god damn. All right, that was a little scary, but they both <laughs> made it through. Yeah. Looks like uh, Eaglet's in the lead by about 30k. Yep. Of our plasma. All right, here we go. Lead. Plasma's okay. got that bomb. It's a it's little a high, birds. though. Oh, come on. But he's delayed it nicely. That's not bad. 1.8, 1.9, 2.0. Yeah. 2 mil. Eaglet's oh. got optimal, 2.06. Yeah. But Plasma's behind by 200,000, and that's basically what happens with birds. Yeah. Um, it's very tricky to get over 1.9 million. Um, you can usually average 1.85 with Bornum. 2.05 is optimal and about 2.35 is the highest I've ever seen in this. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually very hard to get really good scores in this. So you need to be, uh, you need to have basically two strats, one for when you've got X amount and one for when you've got over 2 million. And then they're both going for the, uh, the bomb bomb damage there at bomb points. Yeah, the bomb um, points are the things. So if you bomb those things, you get more points, basically. Yeah. yeah. Any red flying, well, not these ones, but the uh, the drones before. Oh, watch. <gasps> oh! Plasma. Plasma dropping a metal there. All right. Well, there's our first drop. Yep. Um, uh, that's, uh, it's very that's, detrimental. Yeah, it's very... It's going to hurt him a lot. It's a really bad place to drop because the rails coming up are extremely lucrative. Yep. The problem is um, the rails are a game changer, basically. So if, e if Eaglet drops his medals there, he could be behind points as long as Plasma can get back up and that's stay intentional up. intentional right there, yeah. Um, but no, I I've think Eaglet's consistent enough that it's going to be very hard for Plasma to actually get back in this now. Yeah. Yeah. I believe Eaglet... Yeah, he suicided to get more bomb fragments for the boss, Mad Bull up yeah. coming up. Yep. Where you yep. need around a full bomb to uh, really maximize the amount of points you get from him. Plasmo now, is okay, I think, with this, yeah. Yep. To explain Mad Ball, basically, you want to bomb him when he's in a certain location, like what he is right now with Eagle. Yep. Yep. And, he, and if he, he's in the proper location, you get one million points. Yeah. Now it's random when he does this, so yeah. he was very nice to Eaglet. Might not be not so nice to Plasma. Yep. Yeah, he's yep. not being very friendly with Plasma at the moment. No, not at all. Come on down, come on down, come, come on down. down. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, 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 oh. still too high. But yeah, well, so what he was doing right now is that uh, he's just taking care of the rest of uh, Mad Ball's little parts. Mad Ball! Come <laughs> on, you mad bro? Uh, isn't there like a like a Mad Ball Kappa emote? Somewhere? Yeah, it's on my channel. Oh, no. that, that was beautiful. <laughs> Kappa when I ball. Saw that. Yeah, Kappa ball. Kappa ball. Okay, so yeah, he it's been past five cycles. Just do it. Just, just do it. Ball. Just go for it. There we go. Nice. Still, that was almost what 800k. Yeah, that was very good. It's not optimal, but it, at least he got it. That's the yeah. most important thing. Yep. So he should get three million off the uh, off this boss here. He should. Yep. And there there goes the metal rails on Eaglet's side. Yep. Um, 
Wow, almost a full million difference. Oh, Eaglet. Eaglet. You know what? I think he did that intentionally. I think he did it to try to even the playing field a bit. Uh, possibly, but now he's not going to be bombing the met the rails anymore because yeah. if you collect medals below 500, it increases your rank, rank dramatically. Yeah, yes. it's pretty ridiculous how I'm much sorry. the 100 to 400 medals increase rank. I think the 400 point medal is actually the highest um, rank increase for medals in the game. It's like almost an option in terms of value, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So if you have 400 point medals coming to this section, don't bomb these rails, whatever you do, because the oh, rank yeah. gets jacked up like crazy. It's it's miserable. Yeah. It I looks made that like, mistake once. Yeah, it looks like that was a, a friendly gesture by Eaglet then by dropping his medals there to let um, Plasma back into it. Yeah. Just got to keep things interesting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. But uh, Eaglet's scoring potential hasn't been that decreased because he's got maximum shot power here, which means he's going to be getting a lot of chip very soon off the boss. So he should be all right. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming up to this hover tank here. This hover tank actually gives you an extend. If you let it roll to the very end of this section and rest in um, the checkered marker that yep. comes up at the end. But you only get the extend if you destroy the the hover tank pit to the side. So you have to be very careful with how you destroy this boss. Yes. Um, what you usually want to do is you want to destroy the turret at the back and the turret at the front, but not the turret that sits in the middle that you can see popping up um, where Eaglet is at the moment. Because yep. if you destroy that, it sprays bullets in a circle, which is really tough to avoid. Um, Did Plasma drop again? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. I, I think nervous? I missed it. Oh, oh, no. boy. Okay. Oh, yikes. Well, then. Nerves again to them, boys. So just also to kind them. of just explain why they're bombing these scaffolds. Um, it's a very minor point gain. Yeah. It's something to do during this section, basically. Yeah. Again, with like the, the power up of stage one, just something to do. Yeah, the amount of points you get here is marginal. It's not even worth it. It's like a small optimization. And plus, this section's kind of boring anyway, so you don't need to do too much. <laughs> very nice. It is um, interesting to set up. Oh, Jesus. And he he, uh, he also did the killing the one side with shot, killing the other side with bomb, which is the optimal strategy for that section, since I believe the green planes are worth more when bombed, yeah. and the orange planes are worth more when shot. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Usually you bomb the right side, which is easiest, but remember how to do it. It was an intentional suicide from Plasma, since he's getting the extent coming up. Yep. Yeah. So, this should be... Interesting. Uh, I remember when talking with them that they were planning on trying to do the Earth Crisis milk at the same time, yeah, um, so that they could, you know, go out, sit on the couch, have an interview or something. <laughs> uh, but it looks like that probably won't be happening since the the timing yeah. is offset. Yeah, it'll be a good way to get him back in sync. Yeah, that that's for sure. They'll like, definitely <laughs> we'll be able to sync back up. Yeah. Although Eaglet's uh, Eaglet's timing is excellent with uh, with finishing that out. Yeah, very very good. Yeah. He's gotten very consistent at um, killing it out just as it's dropping off yeah. with his double suicide. Like it's just everything's where it should be. Yeah. Plasma going the whole Earth YOLO. Crisis is just such a methodical boss. Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. It's very pick and choose what you kill. Yeah. And there's Eaglet with the. Uh, there we go. There's the milk. Chilling out. Yeah. Eyeing his opponent. Yeah, for those that don't know, the trick to this is that if you leave one of the three turrets in the center alive while you pick off the rest of them, it can't actually trigger the final attack, which means that you can just sit and do what Eaglet is doing and chip milk for like two and a half minutes. It's pretty funny, and it's also repeated in Ibarra as well. Yes, <laughs> although the one in Ibarra, you do have to move around the screen a little bit. A little bit, yes. <laughs> and you, ha you have to hold down the B button. Yeah, exactly. Which does complicate things somewhat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a fun nod to Garriga that the one in Ibarra. Yes. <laughs> so here we go. This is, this is the most exciting part of the run, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Absolutely. You cannot blink. You cannot go to the bathroom. This, this is where it is. This is a good time to take a selfie. <laughs> it's a good time to take a drink or take a cigarette. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Last night they were uh, they were using beer bottles to uh, yep. to hold the buttons down. Yeah, that's kind of what we do nowadays when we get to Earth Crisis. It's either a can of Coke or a bottle of beer or a, a phone or something. You just turn around and have a chat with people. It's quite funny. Yep. Like, um, I believe the gain from doing this kind of milking is oh, about here we go. They're trying, they're trying to sync it back up. I think. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like they're syncing it back up. Yeah, I, I, that's uh, intentional suicide. Yeah, probably yeah. intentional. Yeah. You, you want to suicide anyways oh, at the oh, end of this boss. Plasmo, you gotta kill yourself. Plasmo needs to do it too. Plasmo, you gotta kill yourself. I guess he's gonna have to do it. I guess he's gonna have to do it later. I think okay. it's because he hasn't got enough points. His concern is that he needs That's to conserve true, yeah. one. Yeah. Right. But 
four options, so, he's kind of... Yeah. This this is the other thing, is that uh, Eaglet was going to try to do a fully optionless stage go. four. Yeah. Um, which is... I, I think they both are, but I think Plasma's going to go with I one. I think Plasma goes with one for, for Plus security. Plus, that was a mistake. Yeah. No, that, that was intentional, I believe. Yeah. Um, so this is another significant routing difference between them. <laughs> um, so that should be interesting. So sta stage four brings in the mechanic of destructible scenery. Yeah. Yeah, much more so than anywhere else. Where, yeah, just basically there's destructible scenery that you can get for points and also for metals. Yes. Yeah. And of course, this is another area where not having his metal chain up is really hurting Plasmo's scoring potential here. Yeah. Um, he, he's behind by a fair bit now. And it will, it will only get worse as the stage goes on. Yeah. So this stage has quite a lot of metal hatches, which you do want maximum metal values for. Um, if you don't have max here, your score tanks by at least half. It's pretty bad. Yeah, these hatches here where the tanks pop out, if you're not maxed here, your score value is like really bad in this. So yep. technically you should have about 5 million at this point. Having 4.3 is actually going to be very bad for the next stage um, because you don't have enough lives to reduce the rank width and your score potential is much lower. <laughs> Well, we'll see where it goes. Yep. The but rails on. here coming up, though, they're going to be a game changer, as I mentioned before. Yeah, the, <laughs> the rails are a yeah. very, very big deal. Yeah. Uh, they're going so for the suicide? Up. Yes. Yeah, coming up. You want to suicide here because the, the sharpnel that your ship releases will destroy oh. the treads on these tanks. Come on, Come on. get and it, get it, get it, And if you destroy every little yeah. bit, yeah. you'll get a full bomb, which yeah. is needed for the rails. Yes, yes. exactly, yeah. So... Plasmo's got three full out of that, but Eaglet got all four, I think. Yeah, he's not going for the full one. Eaglet oh, is. Oh, oh, oh. He's got the... Nice, nice safe, safe way to do it. I don't know yeah, if that's that safe, is, though. That's that is, the problem. Yeah, it's decently safe. Oh, yeah, I got it, yeah. Yeah, he got it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so Plasmo oh, going three. for the ghetto oh. style. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, there we go. And he, he was safe about it. He managed yeah. to metal back up to 10k. So Eaglet go. going for the risk. Oh, He's going for the full. Did he do it? He got the full, he yeah. Might have. He got the full. All right, very nice. Yeah, I got very a nice. Satanic Surf is probably like my favorite boss to milk. Yeah, Surf is pretty good. Surf is fun. fun about it, just uh, destroy but all these little bits. Again, note that Eaglet is still playing optionless. Now, the op optionless milk against Satanic is somewhat challenging to do. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Those yeah. little guys can come at you very fast. Yeah. Basically, you destroy everything in the middle, and then these little guys will come out from the tops. Yeah. And then there's also more points to be gained if you kill the turret that you're shooting at right now yeah. in order Yeah. Because like, uh, sections. Yeah, that turret has segments. If you destroy yeah. it from the front to the main body, you get a lot more points. It's like 10,000 points per segment. It's yeah. pretty ridiculous. Yep. And now here we go. Both of them <laughs> already have the, the little drones coming out. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> Wow, so Eaglet already ahead by 1.1 million. Yeah, this is an optimal scoring for Eaglet, even with the medal drop. You kind of want to be over 6 million at this point, so... Yeah, very, very solid run so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eaglet is killing it yeah, right now. E Eaglet is just... Well, there is always the next... There is going to be a, a grudge match, so to speak, uh, in two days' time. There will be a second race. Shoot Plasma down. So maybe maybe that will be Plasma's time to shine. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Plasma cutting it early. Kill it early. Cutting it early. Uh, well, he's got maximum value medals, so he can get another extend by the end of this little platform section coming up. Yeah, I yeah. would like to call this a rank check because yeah. depending on how many bombs fragments you need to destroy these little platforms coming up yes. yeah. determines your rank you optimally want three bombs exactly only, you only need three yeah exactly yeah um you can't think with these they're gonna need four yeah i think eaglet will be doing a uh, double bomb strat on the platforms because it's actually higher value scoring that way um you do you bomb the back turrets uh, you bomb the back platforms and then the front platforms yes Ooh. because you destroy nice. the propellers as well yes the easiest strat is to do a single bomb um which covers all four propellers, but you uh, miss the propellers on the front and the back. It's lower scoring. It's at least a hundred thousand actually the difference. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So there is a big score difference if you're doing one or two bomb strat here. Looks um, like Plamsolo is actually at the uh, the three chart. Uh, yeah. For now, he'll be all right. It's when it speeds up that's the key. Yeah. 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 And uh, 
they both already have uh, homing options, which both set up, is yeah, both set up for super, homing. super handy for yeah. for this stage, especially with Bornum. Yeah, this, the platform section is really the best way to set up for homing. By the way, to set up for homing, you would basically just drop five bomb fragments and then pick up an option. Yep. Um, there's a number of good ways to set it up heading into stage five. Yeah, there's a couple of really good setups. There's some in stage five. The one I prefer is the one in stage four, just before the boss. Yeah, just before Satanic. Yeah, it's a little, you leave one bomb fragment before you fight the second phase of Satanic Surfer. Yep. And then you drop the first four off the first platform and that's easy setup. It's nice and easy to do. No risk involved in having to weave through bullet patterns here. Yeah. Um, but this is essentially what you do in stage five here. You're bombing all the, the propellers and the engines on the platforms for points. Um, yeah, Eaglet is optimal here, 7.4 million, very good scoring at yeah, the moment. This is, uh, this is excellent. Plasma already at the double platforms. Yep, he's also accidentally picked up Dumb Search, which is what I call it. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, so there are actually two types of search options. There's one that actually goes up in enemies' faces and point blanks them, and there's the one that just sits next to you and aims at them. Uh, the one that aims while sitting right next to you is actually kind of bad in most cases because it doesn't always hit the things that you're trying to aim for. Um, but at most ca in most cases you get rid of your homing options at this point anyway so you can pick off the rest of the propellers. Um, this is Nose Laughing 2. Similar premise to the first boss in Stage 1 except it's a lot more aggressive and uh, has a lot more health. Yep. And uh, after this point is pretty much like y you really gotta not die uh, Pretty much, yeah. Other than you know, you need exactly when you want to, but this is sort of the end of the. You have any flexibility at all? Yeah. Um, this this part right here, these two mid bosses, and then Slayer and Blackheart. It's kind of the only part of the run where the players expressed to me that their routes had any flexibility for an unintentional death. Yeah. So. My only concern is that they might not have enough bomb fragments even after suicide for. Uh, Madball too, because the, it's a leeway of about four bomb fragments for maximum that they need ah, in order to do it. Okay. Um, depending on rank as well, um, it's safest to have a full bomb. They can have, I think it's 36 fragments ma uh, minimum. Um, otherwise, oh. they're not going to be able to do it. Ooh, this is tricky. Nice dodging plasma. Yeah, it's partially in that pattern. Oh, yep. actually, he's going to go for a bomb suicide here, I think. Um, so what he's going to do and is... Eaglet's got a full yeah, bomb. doing a full bomb, yeah. I think Plasma either forgot or he's just not going to No, gonna go for he's it. going for a bomb suicide here. So he's going to suicide at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Bomb oh, and then yeah, suicide. Yeah, bomb okay. suicide. Because what that does is when you bomb first and then suicide, it doesn't spawn any fragments, which means that the damage that you're doing to the turrets is still even. Yes. Oh. So you can still do the bomb trick on Madball 2 if you do it that way. Yep. Wow, that's actually, I did not know that. Yeah, it's it's pretty tricky to set up. There, there you go, perfect. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, it's very tricky to do. There's not much leeway either. Um, but if you if you are aware of how to do it, it's actually pretty easy to set up. Yep. Uh, so they're going to be doing the same thing here, picking off all the turrets except this mad ball is the angrier one. Yes. <laughs> the he, one we he call is mad. Kappa Ball 2. Kappa Ball 2. Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't Kamui have Ooh. gone to say oh. that? Ooh. No. Okay. He's the, the, he had the extend, but yeah. it was not I, a good not a good moment. I would probably bomb at this point with yeah. the fragments because uh, those red bullets are actually very, very scary to deal with. Yes, they are technically destructible, but... This is probably one of the harder patterns oh. right here. Plasma! Oh. Plasma! Nice! <laughs> Nice, <laughs> Plasmo! <laughs> oh. And he's still going for it, too. Yeah, he's got a good the pattern. There we go, it's clean. Yep. Nice. Well done. And Eaglet also. Was that a suicide or was that a. That a was uh, intentionally. They're going to go for the engines on uh, Slayer here. Uh, of course, yes. All Getting right. that first um, turret hatch is hard, though. Very hard. Yeah, this, uh, this should be interesting. They'll, they'll probably be picking apart Slayer here. Yeah, they will do. Again, this is another rank check. You essentially want to be able to do all the uh, the pieces of the, the ship with three fragments minimum. Um, any more than that, and rank is going to be a little bit too high for the later stages. Yep. And of course, there is the most famous rank check of all, the how many drones does Blackheart have? Yes. Yeah. It's the easiest way to check in this stage. Uh, it's uh, around about four drones is uh, optimal. Five is okay. Um, anything more than that, and um, stage six is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, let's take a take a score check here. Plasma, uh, sorry, not Plasma. Eaglet is almost at A. Um, Plasma about one point three behind, but still both in quite good shape, actually. Yeah, 
They're both okay, yeah. Like I was saying before, they all, they both know enough strategies to cope with mistakes like that, so they'll be fine. Yep. <coughs> there we go, the macro on the Slayer cockpit. Ooh, that was a little Ooh. close. Dude, you're not playing game, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's just getting right up in there. Yeah. So I guess Plasma's going to be setting up for a homing. He's going for, yep, that's yep. perfect. Nice, very yeah. nice. Yeah. So Plasma should get 9 million by the start of stage six. We're weirding out the eight. options. All right, one, two, three. Oh, and e uh, Eaglet also got, he got the A there. Five, is that five? Five, five. yeah. Okay. So yeah, Eaglet also very nice one. on the uh, Slayer Shrapnel there. Ah, but Blackheart being nice and friendly to Plasmo, giving, oh, yes. him, giving him some extra little little happy drones. Yeah, that's what you want. You want the drones, and he's doing it on the second part of the first phase as well, which is even nicer. Yes. And he's getting more. Yeah. Nice. There Blackheart we go. Blackheart being a bro today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Blackheart is being a bro. You, Plasma not picking up the big shot power, which is interesting because you technically do want maximum shot power. Oh. I don't know, I'm not sure. With Bornum, I always feel like e this shot power that they're at right now is actually a bit better than Yeah, the this max. shot is better. And I find max shot power in stage 6 is better as well. Primarily I think, I mean, for coverage. Secret max, secret yeah. max is definitely the best, but yeah. the max normal shot power, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, this should be pretty interesting. I don't think either of them really want to die here. They both want to save both of those lives for six. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, they'll need at least one for a suicide on the blimp if they're both going for it. Yes, uh, I believe which, they both are. Which will make actual rank management and uh, resource management very tricky in, the, in stage six. I'm actually going to be interested to see if they know how to do the option recovery tricks as well. Because... Um, when I was in Japan last year, he <laughs> actually taught me how to do all of them, and I documented them um, on stream a while back, so I think they probably know how to do it. I'm hoping they do, because it's actually really, really good fun to it see blows my how they do it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty, and the pretty exciting Vulcans. seeing it done. I love this fight, though. This is just three minutes of... It is essentially just three minutes of chip milking, but this boss does... It does keep it interesting it's with all the different patterns it does. Yeah, oh random yeah, attacks. Blackheart is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Although I gotta say, Eaglet must be feeling a little bit betrayed right now. I mean, he's even he he made his own Blackheart T-shirt that he's wearing right now, <laughs> and yet Plasma still got a much friendlier Blackheart fight. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's just this game. Yeah. You know, the the Blackheart love is fickle. All right. So. Yeah. Plasmo finishing first. Off into oh, stage six. We're looking at a near timeout there. Okay, good. Very, very good. Very nice. A5. That is very, very nice. Right, so Plasmo so is not taken. He's going for the full yeah. risk. He's going to go for trying to keep his metal chain through this section. Woo. All right, here we go. This is what I call metal hell. You're uh. almost guaranteed to drop a metal here if you're not careful. Dude! No, this is good. Yeah! Kind of recovery. Yeah, yeah good on. recovery. No, he's lost it. Uh, oh, no, oh, he's got oh it. yes! No, he's, no. Got it. no, he's lost it. No. It's unfortunate. That is, that is extremely unfortunate. Yeah. And because of that, right, he's not going for the setup for these gun blimps. Yeah. Eaglet, come on, you got Eaglet's this. Eaglet's got it, yeah. Yeah. So Eaglet will most likely, yeah, he's going to go for the setup he's, here. He's, he's going to go for the suicide. suicide here, get rid of these guys on the side, and then go into suicide, suicide on the, left, on the yeah. side. Come on. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Nice oh, gain, and he's juicy. got his homing set up right now yeah, as well. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Extremely well done. Just one option, though. <laughs> it's yeah. always scary in that bit. Yeah. Well, he's got some time to recover. Yeah. yeah. Blasmo coming up on the turret wall. Yep. Infamous turret wall here. There's a couple of safe strats I like to use here, but I don't know if these guys will be going for those. So Plasmo is meddling back up. Normally at this phase of the game, you would see people considering whether or not they'd be meddling up, yeah. just because the rank increase may not be worth it. Yeah. Nice suicide. Eaglet about to hit B. I think the nerves are getting plasma. Eaglet going full YOLO and failing at the last hurdle. <laughs> Oh boy, so both of them are down to the last life now. Eagle, so, well, Eagle just got an uh, extend. Eagle just got an extend, yeah, sorry. 
Plasmo needs to get Plasmo. He needs to get past this, which is the last real difficult section here, because all of these enemies come here. This large tank on the right likes to oh! get in the way, like it does, and that's game over. All right, so they will be feeding through just to finish out the credit, um, but that is the official end of the race here. Um, Eagle, 9 the, anyway. the clear victor, but 9.4, absolutely nothing to laugh at. Um, very, very solid play. Now, let's see how he will recover from this because. Yeah, he got oh, there it. you go. Yeah. He got it, yeah. That's a tricky recovery to get that one. Yeah, but he, he did it just fine. Yeah. There's a fun one I like to do here as well. If you leave five bomb fragments off the right set of tanks, yep. you can actually recover from. Uh, you can actually get a homing options using those power ups on the right side it. there. Yeah, yeah there nice. We go again, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Are they actually going to be showing that off though? Because I did that in one stream. It's actually quite funny to do. Yeah, you can actually do it here as well. You leave one turret here on the right side, one fragment there, and then you destroy the four turrets on the right side here, and they drop off the screen. And you can get a homing option off this big turret here as well. Yep. There's a lot of nice little recoveries that you can do here. Um, they're nice to know as well because sometimes mistakes happen in this stage. It's absolutely required that you know how to do them. So here's a yep. trick. Oh, I guess he's not going to bomb that turret. But basically, if you bomb the turrets, like you get like a gain of, I think, 50k? 50k, yeah. 50k. Yep. And you can bomb them twice, correct? Yeah. Only, I think only the Gorega ships actually can. Yeah. Um, it, the trick with the Gorega ships is that you bomb while the uh, hitbox is still in the dead zone. Right. And it actually treats, as, treats it as destroyed without being destroyed. And then you can bomb it again for the point gain. So you actually get 100,000 points off it uh, instead of 50,000, which is pretty cool. You get double the point gain off those big turrets. So yeah, this section's pretty fun, like, just... I guess Eaglet is going to be conserving his bombs f probably for safety for uh, Junkie Monkey, the yeah. next boss coming up. Yeah. Or maybe for here, too, as well. This is a really good spot to bomb for safety. Yeah. Well, these Whoa! three tanks come Plasma. to the left. Plasmo. Come on. So Eaglet is just... Yeah, see, there's a bomb from Eaglet right yeah. there. And yeah. that is a very understandable place to bomb. That is a really brutal exchange, even with ships that have more direct firepower, yeah. but with Bornum especially. Yeah. We have a wide shot on Eaglet's screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wide. It's wide. It's the power up that nobody loves. <laughs> yeah, you can see how high rank is here just by looking at the speed those power ups are dropping yep. on Eaglet's side. It's getting close to maximum here. Plasma there dropping again um, just because the metal was on the other side of a wall of bullets. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, don't don't uh, don't shed any tears for Plasmo, guys. Like I said before, there will be another race in two days' time, um, and perhaps we will see revenge of the Plasmo. Um. Anyways, Junkie Monkey. Yes. Three phases. First phase is a shitstorm of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take it out methodically. Second phase, which I believe is the hardest one. Yeah. Personally. Yes, I would agree. What, that you can safely just bomb bomb away. Yeah, that's true. Let's see if if you have the resources to spare. Eaglet, nope. Eaglet is, Eaglet is it up. going oh, for it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good bomb. Good bomb. Yeah, it's firing out of sync, those four-way missiles. Yeah. So it's uh, quite easy to get trapped by that. Um, they have headphones on, yeah. So they'll be able to hear the little chime as well. Um, which signals when that fast spread appears because um, there's no visual cue for that. It just appears basically Yeah, um, you yep. need an audio cue for that. So it's good that they've got headphones so they can actually hear it And now we begin the milking. Yeah, the milking so phase. these these arms are worth about 10k You know the price of a metal the score of yeah. a metal and I believe this milk can go on for about five minutes and I believe like the end result can be about 600k or maybe yeah that's right yeah, you think yeah. So? yeah. 600 thousand yeah so eaglet's looking around about six uh, c.5 sorry um, which is actually really good yes. um for his pb though he'd want a d or a d.5 but remember he did intentionally drop he at did. the rails yeah so he's had, lost he, a fair bit there, yeah. had he not done that he probably would be verging on d by the end of yeah. this but this is actually a really good score here. We're looking at yes. around about an E score, maybe an F score, um, with no further mistakes. And he's got good resources as well. He's on sitting on three and a quarter bombs. 
Um, with one suicide coming up after this, probably, um, we yep. should be getting a really good score here. Um, but I always call Blackheart 2 and Glow Squid the equaliser because you can have a really good run up to that point and then all hell breaks loose. Yes. They don't take any prisoners, those two bosses. Blackheart can just be an asshole. Yeah. This, this game is absolutely merciless in the last couple stages. Yeah. It's it's vicious how how hard they come at you, especially when rank is like near max at that point. Um, it's very tough to survive with Bornum because um, his shot, when even though it's like rapid fire, it doesn't do as much damage damage as you would think. No. So the and grenades on black hard too. They sometimes they can't even be destroyed. They they just come straight at you. The yeah. grenades or yeah the grenades. Yeah, that's why it's one of the things with rank that you do still need to sort of control, especially with Bornum because this shot power is so weak. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you do need to be a little mindful of rank a little bit more. Yeah. Not go full ham and just max it out. Yeah. yeah. This boss is kind of bleh, though. <laughs> What's up? I usually find this boss kind of bleh, though. It's just like milking here and there. I mean, you do have to move around a bit, but this boss... Yeah. I don't know. I find this boss to be kind of exhilarating because it's like you're so far into the game. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you're the, very, like, tense. The, the tension comes from the rest of the game, not so much from this fight in and of itself. I mean, once you get to this part of the fight, it's sort of a, it's sort of a breather in a way, which is really nice. Yeah. Very well, you know, very much an earned, like, well-deserved breather um, before you go into the madness that is stage seven. So just to... Um, just to recap, the player's original score targets, um, Eaglet was aiming for an F, uh, F5 or so, um, and Plasmo was aiming for an E5 or so. Um, so Plasmo uh, clearly will not be making that this run, um, but Eaglet, do you think he's still on target for, for an F score, potentially? Yeah, stage seven, it's pretty short. Uh, the key thing they're going to be doing here is leaving one of these turrets alive because it actually stalls out the rest of the phases and you can actually get more points off it that way. Because usually if you destroy all the turrets it just shifts into the next phase and then into the next phase. Yep. But if you leave one of these back six round turrets alive, it'll actually stop at certain points and just send volleys of enemies at you which you can just get loads of points off. It's a yep. key scoring trick in this because the stage is kind of short anyway. Um, yeah, so Plasmo's got it set up here. Yep. He's doing the crazy thing because that hitbox is really not as small as you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, and the little thing Eaglet does is uh, he uses um, the shots, the timing of the shots, based off the sound of the music. Ah. to judge whether or not he's on the right level of rank. Yeah. Yeah, so really? it's like a sort of audio cue he has for that. He says, like, if the timing of the shots is, like, the same as the beat of the music, then he's on the right level of rank. Ah, I see. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's really interesting. I never thought of something like that. It's pretty cool how all these high-level Garaga players have these little tricks that are very very unique to them on how they like judge rank or how they handle certain sections. Uh, that's the nice thing I find about Garaga is that it's so... Well, I'm not going to say open-ended, but there's like a lot of room for improvisation and like you know putting your own stamp on the game. Yeah. That you know you'll find a lot of different methodologies and different strategies from all sorts of different players. It's pretty cool speaking to like all the different high-level players out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember you saying that uh, Kamui has something similar for uh, auto fire rates. Like, yes. Like she the, does, the yeah. sound of them is different. Yeah, the sound of them, the timing on certain you know certain background music. She has like. Uh, timing and rhythm of the uh, certain turrets firing so she knows exactly how much rank she's So got. both players are leaving one turret alive yeah, here same thing as to time. So the middle is going to, to explode basically yeah. and the final boss is going to come out. Yeah. For you, it's like kind of like as a teaser. Yeah. Yes. But if you bomb it as it comes out, it releases sharpnel, which is worth, I believe, 500k? Yeah, pretty much. Significant, really significant. It's a, it's a huge worth amount bombing. of points. So oh, boom. There we go. Perfect bomb. timing for you. Nice. And Perfect very timing. nice on yeah. Plasma. Yep. Yeah. So Eaglet didn't get as much because the rank is a little bit higher. Yep. So it takes a little bit longer to destroy the shrapnel with the bombs. So it's around about 400,000 points you want at this point. So he's got a good amount there. Yep. D score coming up. Yeah, D D very much in reach. Yeah. Probably even E counting uh, Blackheart 2. Yeah. 
And again, leaving that turret at the beginning stalls this section out, which means you can actually milk these drones for more points. The other thing they're doing is they're setting up the item drop order so yes. that the next item will be an option, preferably. And that way, no medals drop on the drones uh, before Black Heart 2. Yes, very, very important. Yeah, yeah. So, Eaglet's got it, yeah. So, the next one should be. Um, it won't be a medal. Yeah, it won't be a medal, definitely. Yeah. Plasma should have it as well. Wow, I'm playing it risky here. Yep, there we go. So yep, there was an option. Yep, so there won't be a medal drop at this point, which is exactly what you want because, as you can see, yeah. it's, there's no way you can go get a medal at this rate. No, <laughs> not without wasting a bomb, but you need you need all your bombs in exactly. stock. Yeah. So, so the reasoning for hoarding bombs is that, that uh, Blackheart 2 is going to be spewing grenades in the, his third phase, his second and third phase, Yeah. which is worth... About it's a ton of points. It's a lot of points. It's one of the <laughs> key scoring points in Garega, actually. Yeah. And so you want you want Black Heart Two to spew as many grenades as he can. Yeah. Oh. He's weaving. Yes. Ooh. Rebound Vulcan. That's yeah. a stay still pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, these here, are the grenades here. We have some grenades. You want him to spew as many as much as he can. Want, he's probably going to drop down, as usually when you want to time the bombs. One key problem I can see is that rank is too high for you. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see the grenades are not being destroyed as quickly. Yes. So this could be a challenge here. He's got too many lives. Well, he's going to be suiciding most of them away anyway, but at this point it's impossible to drop your rank back down. Bomb. So he's the start of the second phase. Oh, here we base. go. There's, uh, there's the first bomb. That was what, almost 200k right there? Yeah. Blackheart is going to be doing a pattern of drop grenades, and then this pattern, drop grenades, this pattern, drop grenades, this pattern, and then into phase three. <laughs> so it's basically just dodge, don't shoot anything. You want to time out these phases. Here we go. Oh. Blackheart 2 does a total of five drops, basically. That was another, what, 250k there? So D7, E is absolutely going to happen. This is looking pretty good for Eaglet here. There'll be at least one suicide, maybe two on the third form, I would think. For resources primarily and also for scoring. Yes. <laughs> so here's where Blackheart can be either a dick. Yeah. 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 That's, the, that's the problem with high rank. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. The sweeping Vulcans Mark II. Yeah. Oh, very well handled there. Such a beautiful pattern to avoid that, though. Once you get the rhythm for that, it's, it's oh such God, a good pattern. It's, it's an amazing yeah. feeling. Yeah. The grenades are very oh, scary. No, that, that was that's not a fine. good setup. But <coughs> extra bomb, probably not a problem. Also, E score. He was looking for a slide there. That's why he was off to the left side there. Because yeah. sometimes you want to bait the slide. Move along the bottom of the screen. Yes. So you kind of want to bait him towards the side of the screen that you know you can get away from. Yeah. The problem is now that Blackheart hasn't slid across the bottom of the screen for that phase, he's going to do it on the second one. That's normally how you gauge when he's going to do it. Oh. But, the but kill he is just, early. Yeah, he decided to skip the last yep. drop. Yep. The kill is early, which is good. We have Close Squid coming up. Two lives, half a bomb. I think he's got this. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> it's in the bag. This is essentially an E5 score here. Yes. E5, E7, E9, possibly an F, I think. Yeah. yeah the, the cool thing about Glow Squid is that it's basically just a grudge match. There's no scoring to be done. Yeah. It's just it's dodging. Just dodge. I, I think technically you can milk the very wingtips, but you it's can. really not worth it. It's not, it's not worth not. it at all. <laughs> it's not. That's a very high level optimization to do, and most of the time at this point, you're so stressed out that you just want to get it over and done with. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that was a trade there. God. Yep. He did not want to do that. No, he did not. At this point, the, uh, the clear bonus on those lives is worth quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. This is a good pattern, though. Destructible bullets, uh, big, yep. uh, big missiles. Onto the second phase, and yeah. The, and the big missiles, yeah. Yeah, depending on what, what weapons he chooses to pull out here, it can be uh, very easy or very hard. Um, Damage is actually very important in this boss fight. You, like, you have to be shooting him in the middle. Yeah. Yes. Or else the boss will just go on forever and ever. He and got another death, good yeah. patterns, but he's dying here. And I think he actually downgraded to uh, the, the shot just so he can get more oh dear. time into uh, more damage. Oh! oh! Spread cannon not all right. paying any mind there. Well, there um, there goes the all, but still, uh, what was that? E, uh, E4, yeah. E4? E5? Somewhere in there. E4.5 or something like that? Yeah. yeah. There's That's the excellent first run. Isn't that your PB? 
Well, E4, yeah. Yeah. Excellent run from from both players. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a very, very good score to have with Bornham. And yes, it's the it. final phase where Gloska just goes ape shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spastic cockpit incoming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, this, uh, yeah. it can be very so challenging to react to this last phase. It's, it's so these spastic. Missiles, these missiles and these destructible bullets are like, like real killers. Well, yeah, and the destructible bullets, when the rank is as high as it is by this point in the game, I mean, destructible in name only. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah especially if you're playing a ship with a weaker shot like yeah. Bornham. Yeah. This boss is actually a nod to the last boss in Wrecker, actually. It's a very common trope in Yago games. Yeah. Uh, in Wrecker, it appears oh, oh. like this. Um, Pink Sweets as well does one like this as well. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, so it's a very common thing in Yago games. This, like, crazy, jittery, tiny ship that sprays bullets and shit everywhere. It's pretty crazy. There we go. 2cc. Could have been an F score. E point whatever it was. 6, I think. Very, very well yeah, done. That, that would have been an F counting his score right now. Yeah. And, and then done. Plasmo just rounding it out right there. Yeah. And we have our demo. <coughs> Excellent. Oh, and then we have <laughs> the GIF. <laughs> that that GIF so screen, yes. I don't even know. <laughs> so it looks like they are closing it out. Handshake. Some yeah. closing comments here. They're probably going to take a couple minutes on the main stage to speak with the, um, the main French commentators. Yeah. Uh, and then I think they said they would like to come back here and give a few words. Yeah. Um, but yeah, excellent run, guys. Um, yeah. Especially under pressure at an event like this, you know, both of them in a game that's this random yeah. and this fickle, absolutely yeah. incredibly well done. Yeah, I mean, I've done a run on stage before, and it's not a nice feeling at all, having all of the people staring at you yeah. up there. And you know, any one mistake could basically cost you the run. It's pretty rough. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty rough. So they've done very well up there. Uh, yeah, oh God, <laughs> I couldn't do that at all. Yep. And Garriga is not a game that you play on stage at yeah. any point. No. Just because you're on the knife edge for the entire run. I mean, even when, when Kami was here, there was uh, a 2cc, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. She, she did a few 1ccs, but there were a lot of resets when she was here the first time. So uh, it's not a good, it's not an easy demonstration game to play at all. Absolutely not. Um, let me roll through chat really quickly just to see if there's anything interesting going on. Uh, Denty4 says, I'm thinking it had been an F score if he didn't intentionally drop medals in stage three. Yes. I think absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Um, so that was a kind of a good sportsmanlike decision, but it did eventually cost him uh, you know, at least one life, probably the run. Um, but still, I mean, you know, good for him for, for trying to make it interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. It's crazy how long the later stages are compared to the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. Stage um, six and seven are 20 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> stages one to five are 20 minutes long. <laughs> it's it's not quite as crazy as uh, Pink Sweets in that regard, but it's similar. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> uh, let's see. About how many points did you miss by dropping medals at the beginning of stage three? Uh, I would estimate around about half a million because he did it just on Mad Ball, wasn't it? Or just it, was, it was just... He did the first set of the rails yeah. like just that first one that he could anchor okay i have 10ks now but none of the fixed ones so about 300,000 then yeah it's a lot of points somewhere between 300 and 500 would be my yeah. guess let's see has there been a race for ibarra yet no yeah, i don't <laughs> i don't know very many people contender. who play ibarra if, you should be the first contender yeah, should get someone say, to we do should it. get soft drink to do it. Yeah. If, uh, if hey, someone, we have our boys. <laughs> someone wants to, absolutely. Oh, hey and guys. here they are. Hey, Hang on. That yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that was that was something. Do you guys uh do you guys want to come on and say a few words? Oh, hang on. I do actually have another uh, microphone here. Have a seat, dude. Have a seat. Here you go. Yeah, take my seat, guys. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'll you go in the middle. Okay. 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 So yeah, um, the run was uh, pretty special, you know, I, of course I felt a lot of nerves, like anyone does on this stage, I think. Um, and I had a ridiculously bad metal, metal drop in stage three, which lost out. I lost out on about yeah eight hundred thousand points, something like that. 
Uh, of course it wasn't intentional. <laughs> ah, okay. We, we thought it may have been intentional to kind of even the playing field between you and Plasmo since he had dropped very recently at that point. Yeah, I, I wasn't looking at him. It was just a pure mistake on my <laughs> part. Uh, All right, then. Catch up with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think the rest of the run went pretty well. I had a perfect Black Heart, uh, Mad Ball Mark II. Um, yes. 100% completed. And uh, um, I tried to play a more safe route, but... As you probably also saw, normally my route has 12 hertz auto fire from the beginning. I triggered 15, so rank rose higher. Yeah, I was wondering about that because when I talked to you about it last night, you said you were going to raise to 15, but not until stage three. Exactly, but I accidentally did it now when I didn't want to restart, so you oh, know. So it was an accident. Yes. All right, I see. Um, but um, going up against Blackheart Mark II with that high rank is something I've never done before, and it yeah. was. It was really interesting. That was that was pretty brutal to watch. I mean, just like not even being able to kill the grenades exactly. at all. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think like some of the things that are dodgeable, I managed to do at least like yeah. the needle patterns and stuff. I was I was quite impressive to watch even. So. Yeah, a lot of like um, sort of in the zone dodging, which was really nice to experience. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, glow squid was way too much. I think having a higher speed for the ship is pretty much uh, necessary for that high rank. Yeah, unfortunately, and that's an area where Bornham really struggles. Yeah, because when I saw, like, uh, I think the first ones I got was the laser turret and the grenades. Uh, that seemed all right, but then he pulled out the missile turrets and the, the big spread. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I tried my best to clear it, didn't manage to do it, but uh, Hopefully I'll be able to provide a much better run on Sunday. I'm aiming for, you know, now since I've done this, my aim is definitely upwards in the 16 million region, G, yeah. All right. Which should be possible if I get a good run going. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you get your nerves out today, you get your mistakes out today, and then you bring it hard. Nerves out, beer in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm with you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited looking forward to see that one because obviously I couldn't watch it. Mm. Um, but looking at my gameplay, actually, I could have taken the chance to watch it instead. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, midway through the game, I decided to switch to Bon and B because I like the color more. Mm. And so I went forward and fulfilled my dream. Yeah, awesome. I guess that's what I have to say about my run. The okay. B meme. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, so, any. No, no other comments, Plasmo. No, uh, no, um, no, no declaration like of revenge. I got some really unlucky metal drops yes. in the beginnings, and I couldn't really get to the max medals again. So the rank was kind of fucked, and I couldn't get the next extents, and I was like, like my route was completely um, yeah. messed up. So, um, yeah, I just press start a lot, and yeah. On okay. Sunday, I will try to press start less often. Okay. Uh, either way, I mean, ec excellent run to watch regardless, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching and for having us here. Thanks uh, so much. I think we will try to make sure that both cabs are, like, totally reset before we play on Sunday, so we have the default the, item drop order as well. Order. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see. Makes sense. We'll probably make things a bit more um, consistent and interesting, yes. Yep. Probably, yeah. I, I think, actually, this time, the, uh, the reset that happened there, um, that did actually offset the order, I think... Um, I think you got an extra large power up compared to him because the order was slightly different. Exactly. So doesn't really matter that much for Bornem though, because um, uh, like the three-way shot, uh, regardless of how big the hitbox is, you still get the same amount of tick points from it, and it does the same amount of damage. Uh -huh. uh, same thing with uh, five-way shot, which is regular max, and special shot level up. It doesn't do more damage; it just covers a bigger area. Mm -hmm. And that's why you trigger it primarily for Black Heart 2, because you need the, like a big spread to cover all of the grenades that you can shoot out. Yes. So yeah, well, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank you thank so you much, much for you know excellent runs, guys. Really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, and see you guys on Sunday again. See you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so. There we go. So uh, that about wraps it up for right now, but uh, don't leave just yet. We do have the Strikers 1945-2 run coming up in a little bit. I need to double check the exact schedule. Uh, I think Yom set the setting up now for it. Oh, okay. Oh, is it right? Uh, it is right, right, right now. now. Okay, so never mind. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're, <laughs> we're doing Strikers 1945-2. Um, all right, let me, uh, let me update the channel info.
and also probably switch back to the clean capture. Oh no, they're just at the they're just at the sponsors. You guys probably don't care about that. Um, yeah, cool. Strikers. So, Acres, do you know anything about Strikers 1945 too? A little bit. Yeah. I know a little bit too. I I did try to route it as a one all. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's psycho. I mean, it's basically just be at this spot at this point, yeah. get medals. Yeah, it's a it's a very straightforward game, but there's going to be a lot of enemy milking and intentional powering down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, so um, but we'll get there. We'll get to that once they start playing because it's otherwise it's pretty easy to actually follow and understand. Like psycho games are always like that though. It's like they're quite simple in how they're presented and how they play. So it's very easy for someone to actually come in and you know get into the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me. Uh, Take a quick peek here over at the chat on Kevin DDR's channel. Kevin, thank you again so much for uh, allowing us to multicast this to your channel. Uh, really appreciate the extra visibility. Uh, and again, for anyone curious, the reason this is not also being broadcast to the SDG Weekly channel is that we had some technical difficulties getting the multicast to connect with that particular channel. Hopefully I'll have those resolved before the stream tomorrow. Let's see. Uh, what's going to be shown on this channel from Ratfiz, uh, today it is Battle Garega uh, and Strikers, which we just finished, and Strikers 1945-2, um, which is coming right up. Um, tomorrow will be, I believe, uh, Strikers again and Doronpachi Daiojo, um, played by Fufufu. Uh, the player for Strikers is uh, Y Saito, by the way. Um, and then on Sunday, we will have Battle Garega race again and a, a repeat of the Doronpachi Daiojo. Uh, let's see. Any Ikaruga? No. Uh, unfortunately, there's no exhibition of Ikaruga this year. I think there was a couple years back. Yep, that looks about it on the uh, chat there. Cool. And uh, lots of emotes from chat. There we go. <laughs> and hello from Ann K. Hello, Ann. Hey, Ann. Some Craigasms. Craigasms. And Pogchamp. Yep. All right, cool. So, yeah. Um, I guess. I don't really know much about 1945-2, uh, but I do know that there was some technical difficulties getting it set up for this particular event. Yeah. Um, they, the board that they originally were planning to run on, um, when Y Saito started playing it, uh, it didn't feel right. So it seems that it may have been an incorrect version uh, compared to the boards that he was practicing on in Japan. So uh, I know that Yom uh, called in a couple favors to try to get a board that is the correct version, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure if he actually managed to do that. So, um, as last I heard, it was still an incorrect version, and that uh, Y Saito had been practicing on this this version yeah. uh, pretty much all night yeah. to to try to get back up to to speed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know there was like different versions of Strikers. Like, I always thought there was just the one, but it's actually interesting to hear something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. It's not the first time that something like this has happened. I mean, yeah. anytime you deal with real arcade hardware, uh, you know, with with different ROM differences or different board differences or different region differences, I mean, even the smallest things can make a surprisingly huge difference. Um, at uh, at ASX, I believe we actually had a, a board with like the clock chip was old, so it was running faster or slower than it should have been. Ah, okay. Um, and it was a very subtle difference, um, but you know the when you have this level of player, they're able to pick up on that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Is there any web page detailing what's going to be played this weekend? Asks Ulrich. Um, yes. So. Um, uh, Briz L in the stream linked uh, the Stunfest program, um, but you can also do a search on that on said program for the term Washoi, um, and it will bring up all of the shmup events only. So let me post that in the chat. 
uh, if I can paste. Is that not working? There we go. And I will post that also in the Kevin DDR chat. So there you guys go. That is a link to just the Washoe content. Um, should give you the, the precise schedule there. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, right now it looks like we're just kind of in a small intermission. Uh, they're showing sponsor content on the on the mainstream there. So if chat does have any questions, this would be an excellent time. Otherwise this may be a this may be a break time for us as well. Yeah. <laughs> what of um Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I have not actually gotten a chance to play it yet, but I've heard that Pink Sweet Suicide Club is here at Stunfest. It is. Uh yeah. How is it? I am so excited to try it. It's actually harder than the original Pink Sweets. Okay. Because Plasma last night, when I was talking to him, he made it sound like it was a little bit more consistent, a little bit easier, because the, the lives come around more often. Yeah, yeah. I do agree with him on that, because uh, the original Pink Sweets, um, when you get a when you get lives, the counter is actually quite high for that. Like, it's a 2,500 for the Zan counter. In Suicide Club, it's actually half that. Yeah. So you can actually get lives far more frequently. But the thing is, though, every time you pick up an extend, it goes back to 1,250. Okay. But you can actually accidentally push it back up to 2,500 by bombing. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So you. So you, the 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 roast crackers are still negative. Yes, exactly. So you can actually still adversely affect your run by bombing too much. Um, but if you're playing very well, you get lots and lots of lives, which is really nice. That's what actually surprised me in this when I first sat down to play this. I actually got like four lives in one stage. Oh, wow, yeah. So, okay, this is like pretty cool. But uh, otherwise, the game itself is actually a lot harder because there is now a rank counter which sits where the high score usually sits. Uh -huh. And it seems like it tops out a lot earlier than okay. normal. Um, enemies seem to be a tiny bit more aggressive than I've noticed. Um, and there are also other little changes as well, like graphically. Um, stage 5, for example, the train stage, is now a glacier stage, which looks pretty cool with like trains going across like ice caps and stuff. Yeah, I bet. And stage 6 is awesome. They've actually made it nighttime. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's okay. Like night clouds, it looks really fucking cool. That must look awesome. It must be almost reminiscent of uh, Gerga. Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, very cool. The other small change I noticed is that you now have three rose hips instead of two. Okay. Maximum, which means it plays more like um, version 1.01 .01 yeah. on the, uh, on the uh, 360 port, in that you've got three options. You've got one right behind you, which can actually protect you from bullets as well. Yeah. It's actually really, really good fun to play. I mean, that little change to how often you get your extends actually makes it a lot more exciting to play. And from what I understand as well, Plasma says that um, Infinite Lives has been completely removed from this. Yes, that, that is my understanding as well. More reliant on getting those extends as often as possible in order to, you know, progress. And I'm trying to figure out if suiciding has more more of an effect on rank as well, because it looked like the counter when I was at max it dropped back down to like. I think it was 500,000 after dying like three times. So it looks like you can actually still chop off big chunks of rank by dying. Okay. And like in Garaga. So there might be an element of Garaga play in there somewhere, I think, as well. Yeah. But it, it looks like it looks like a very well done ROM hack, I'm going to call it, because that's yeah. essentially what it is. Yeah. But it's pretty good fun, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one, one worth checking out if you haven't tried it yet. I definitely want to get a chance. I. There's a lot of really great stuff here this time. Uh, in the chat, someone brought up uh, Fire Lancers here. Arcade yeah. Fever brought up the Fire Lancers here. I've played that, actually. Yeah, I, I uh, haven't played the newest version, but uh, I've been to Chap's place a couple times. He showed me some of the development builds. It's it's great fun. It's um, I played it on like the highest difficulty, whatever it was, just to try it out. Yep. I, was, I, was on, I was covering your stream, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'll play this. And um, it actually is pretty cool. It's got like a Raiden 4 type scoring system where like the faster you kill something as soon as it comes on the screen the yeah. more multiplier you get yeah the, the main inspiration you said was a uh, caravan style systems where oh, you, caravan style okay. yeah like and it's fast and you get bonus just, waves it's just insane to think it's on wonderswan yeah yeah definitely have you, i mean have you played the wonderswan version no i have not uh, okay yeah you definitely give it a shot it's a little different on that hardware Wait, so what hardware is it on right now? Uh, I believe right now it is a Windows build. Uh, I know that he has he has had it running on Taito Type-X, um, but I don't 
I don't believe there's any plans to make a PC or Type X release of it at this particular okay. moment in time. Um, you'd have to talk to Trap for the specifics, but I believe he's actually planning to make a production uh, Wonder Swan cartridge or a, a flash cart like drop in. That's uh, so crazy. Yeah, it's a it's a huge project, but it's awesome progress. I mean, yeah, I. Let's see. The play on, uh, I always been, uh, yeah, oh my god, I can't talk. I don't know, just banana just said like it looks like Wonder Swan's trash for schmuffs, but I mean like, I'd say like you know the D pad for that, yeah, I would agree. It's an interesting D-pad console. Looks so awful, but I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, also the Ketsui thing that's here. Yeah. yeah, so the the Ketsui PS4 is here. Uh, I have not tried that yet. It's Ketsui Matsuri Edition. It's blue label, or like it's that. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, I need to try that. It's like a Matsuri Edition. Um, I think it's basically just you start full power. I have I have like five minutes of experience with it, so I don't know my, much at all. But it's like five minutes. Uh, jeez. It's like you start full power. I think it's like second loop difficulty oh, in wow. some aspects. Okay. Um, and I don't know what's at the end. I think I think Doom does come out at least at yeah. the end. It's it's not strictly a range mode because there's going to be an actual a range mode in the PS4 version yeah. as well. But from what Yom told me, Matsuri Edition is also going to be available in that. So there's going to be three special modes in the Kensu PS4 version, which would be very very nice. Um, from what I understand, the Matsuri Edition is like sort of like. Um, Ketsui Extra, the you know the 360 game. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a sort of rework of that system where you have to build up from one to five in order to continue your um, you know high scoring chains in. But um, it's still short burst chaining, but the actual multiplier is based on how quickly you can build up to five, which is actually very interesting, I think. Later. Like, so. Yeah. And it seems like certain bosses have second loop patterns, whereas certain bosses don't. Ah, interesting. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, it's a mixture of first and second loop throughout the game. It's actually pretty interesting. I haven't actually had a proper go over it yet, but that's my from what I'm from what I've heard from like you know Yom and Jamers and Oppo playing it. That's kind of what it is. So yep. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. There were a couple other things here. Um, when's the Don Pachi replay? I don't know. Actually, do you know when the when the Okay, I'll have to talk to Plasma about it. <laughs> I don't You'll know. Have to ask Plasma about that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, isn't there a Dejika announcement or something? We don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna bug him for a Groove Coaster. Yeah. I'm bugging him for Groove Coaster. Oh, yeah. do it! Yeah, that'd be awesome. Where are they? I haven't seen them yet. They're uh, they're right next to M2. Okay. They're they're the if you go around the corner while Rival Mega Gun is, that's their little All thing. Right. If they're still there after this, I'm. Well, they'll be there. I think they're there for the whole weekend. Yep. Okay. I'm um, at them. Let's see. What other good... Oh, um, Tenoshi Mas and uh, Akata Blue. Yes. Um, I, I, that is the only credit that I've had time to play so far while I've been here. Uh, that game feels really good. It does feel like a cave game. It, it feels like SDOJ, but without the things that I don't like about SDOJ. That's what I think exactly, yeah. It does. Um, when I was speaking to um, James about it this morning, um, after he had a go, I was saying that it looks like you know SDOJ system, but without some of the dumb shit that you have to do in SDOJ. Yeah. I mean, the recharging looks incredibly fun. You launch it's that so fun. Bomb, it's so good. And it cancels and sprays all these items everywhere. It's yeah. amazing how good it looks. It's like. it's so satisfying. Yeah. Reminds me of Ikai Ikai Katana a bit. You yeah, know, when you shoot bit, the yeah. swords. Oh yeah. And then Shin. just. Yeah. Yeah. Shin, yeah. That's that's kind of what it feels like as oh. well. Oh, oh yeah, I, we got action. I believe we are coming back here. Um. Yeah, there it looks go. like they are uh, picking up for that looks the like warm up credit. I think this. Hopefully, this is a warm up. I don't know. Uh, Strikers two with a pancake as well. Huh? Is he actually started or? I don't know. Or is it just practice? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, they're standing up at the front, so I think they are just announcing. Yeah, see, look, no signal. So. Okay, yeah, it, it looks like there's still a, still a little bit of a of a practice warm up kind of a situation right now. Um, but we'll see, I suppose. I hope so. I don't know. Maybe. Started a bit Either late. way, he's playing Flying Pancake, so... Uh, okay, yeah. well, we'll just get started anyway. Yeah. Okay. yeah, fair enough. So, Strikers. Strikers, uh, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, Strikers. Well, it's a pretty straightforward game, as I was saying. You, I mean, you have one bomb. Uh, well, you've got two buttons. One's for shot and charge shot. Um, one okay. is for yeah. your bomb. 
and with it being a psycho game it's incredibly straightforward you don't have to do too much in terms of standard playing but strikers 2 is unique in that there's a few very weird little tricks that you can do in order to maximize your score that i know of anyway there might be more out there that i might not have seen before but from what i know intentional power down is one of them um, the system in psycho games is that when you power up you power up to a certain level and then you only get power ups after that from very specific formations mm -hmm. but if you power down you can actually force spawn a set of enemies which have one power up carry in them ah. and that's like generally how you get scores that you'll see the player constantly bump into stuff to power down spawn that set pick it up bump into another enemy to power down and repeat that cycle over and over again so you'll see that quite a lot in strikers games you'll probably see it a lot in here as well there's another little trick in strikers too that you can do in that when you get an e when you get a boss timeout if you die in a certain point in the screen when you respawn you respawn without losing a life and picking up all of the items that you spew out at okay. the same time which can be anything between three to nine shot power-ups and a couple of extra bombs so it's like quite a ridiculous amount of points you can get that way yeah wow yeah, there's wow. also enemy um, formation and uh, respawning there's like certain bosses where you destroy certain parts and they endlessly respawn constantly i think it's like stage four boss does that mm. like it's like a, a tank with like two um, two tracks on either side every time you destroy one of those rail tanks it spawns another one so you just like left and right left and right spawning you'll probably see it very soon yeah and um, that's another scoring trick in this um and then there's also the uh clear bonus as well so you'll not see any bombs in this i don't see you'll see many intentional bombs in this anyway so okay um when you clear the second loop you think it's like a hundred thousand points per bomb something like that oh wow okay. and also a lot of points for spare lives so i think it's around about four million is the world record in this 4.5 something like that so okay. it's a lot of points um, but you'll be getting quite a lot of it from the stage as well so it's going to be interesting to see what he does this uh, what he does in this <laughs> looks like he's uh, just doing some final prep there cleaning the cab taking a drink of water adjusting <laughs> headphones and such yeah just getting comfortable yeah this is going to be very very good um I actually like this game compared to a lot of the Psycho games. Like this and Dragon Blaze are actually very, very exciting to watch. Yeah. I find definitely. Dra uh, Dragon Blaze was great fun uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, when yes. Ross did his run in uh, yeah. 2015, that was that was one of the coolest yeah. runs. Yep. Yeah. For those that haven't seen it, you should check that out on STG Weekly. Yeah, so I think we're actually, I think this is actually it. Yeah, I believe yeah. this is the run now. So this is a good run. The thing about um, Strikers and most Psycho games in general is that the first few stages are actually randomized. So um, depending on the stage order he gets, he might be on for a very good score. But these players are so high level that they can cope with any stage order, basically. It doesn't really matter. Yep. So you can see here he's picking yep. up and powering down, picking yeah. up and powering Bump, down. Bumping into the big thing, powering yeah. down. Yeah. So, but otherwise, it's just enemy destruction in this case. So managing your charge bar, your charge bar at the bottom is uh, increased by shooting stuff and yep. uh, killing stuff as well. So here you can see four spawning three there yeah potentially didn't destroy the first one nor did it spawn another two yeah little tricks like that's actually the first time i've seen that in particular okay um so that's a nice little optimization you can see it done on bosses here as well in some cases um, the flying pancake is actually the highest scoring ship in the game because it's incredibly strong plus it's also the fastest ship as well yeah so you'll be doing a lot of this um forced spawning of uh you know power up carries here this is so scary to be this though. Yeah, this this dodging is actually, I mean, already quite impressive. The, yeah, the hitboxes crazy. in this game are not small. Yeah, not small at all. Um, I mean, keep, keeping in mind, this is very much a psycho game. I mean, this is you need to know where you're gonna be before you're before you have to be there. Yeah. Things will come fast, and you will not be able to react to it. So it's very impressive to see just how how many what would to a normal player be considered risks we're already taking even only at the stage one boss. Yeah, yeah. See what he's doing here is intentionally milking these drones that appear during bosses. Yep. Most boss fights will have these little uh, small enemies that just spawn you know, different places. He's just milking them out to get as many points as possible. That's actually a really good stage one. 
really good. So yeah, again, this stage is randomly selected as well. It's like a set of them and they're all completely randomized in order from the very beginning. And then after, I think it's like stage four or five, there'll be a set order. So um, these players will actually be able to cope with any stage order. I know some players in the West, when they practice, they like to use a save state to fix uh, the order. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, but most I of believe time, this is the boot order. I think when you boot it up, it's one It's yeah. one set. It's, yeah. Boot order, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another scoring thing that I forgot to mention is that these medals will actually pulse in color. Oh, is it the flashing thing again? Yeah. 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 So they like cycle between like dull and white, dull and white. When you pick them up at white, they're like 2,000 points yeah. each. Um, yeah, as you can see here. Solid chain of 2,000s. Solid chaining. It's only in Strikers 1945-3 or Strikers 1999 as we know it um, that you actually get the medal chaining. Yeah. So like in that game and onwards when you pick up max value medals you start to increment like a chain bonus which like goes up to I think it's like 500 points total or something like that or 1,000 points total and as you continue your chain you get extra points for maximizing your score that way uh, but once you drop your chain you have to build it up again and again and again yeah. so that's the first time you actually see um, chaining chains metal chaining so but in this one, it's just you pick them up at max value metal, yeah. um, max value to get your scores, which is why you do a lot more milking in this one. Yeah, so he's doing it again here. He's purposefully stalling out this phase to try and get as many of these as possible. And the flying pancake is very good at that because it has homing lasers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I always, I always love the bosses in the Strikers games. It's like, <laughs> like some, some, you know, Zeppelin or your aircraft carrier or whatever, like a normal-looking historical weapon, and then suddenly it turns into like a giant robot, yeah, transformer thing. Yeah, it suddenly transforms into some outlandish super weapon, basically. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I've always thought it was just really great. Yeah, like you, you get the best of both worlds. You have the the giant shmup boss like super weapon completely impractical thing yeah. and then also like the real world historical like nostalgia kind of a feel yeah later bosses are quite silly though if i remember correctly I'm not going to spoil the surprise for those that haven't seen it though but there are there are some pretty outlandish bosses in you know these games yeah yes. yeah so we got basically another straightforward stage trains um, you get medals from the train so you kind of want to make sure that you destroy them while they're fully on screen you know to spawn as many mod medals as possible um, metal chaining here is actually very precise obviously because you need to be able to pick them up in batches of two or possibly three yep. in order to get them at max value if you're going for optimal score here and when you get them in like this little this square and diamond formation, they're actually quite hard to time, especially with like lots of bullets flying everywhere. So it can be very tricky. Yep. And he's probably noticing. Worked, he's like probably worked out like the best times when to collect. Yeah. 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 Most of the routes are very carefully planned in this. So yeah. they want to destroy it at certain times. They want to pick up at certain times and so on. Um, charge charge gauge management is also very very careful as well. Very precise very planned out as well yeah. more so in 1999 than it is in this actually yeah. so this boss doesn't actually spawn any extra stuff besides the mines so I think this boss here will actually fire mines from the back so he's gonna try and get around it I think after this here we go yeah, there we go. So he's yep, going to try yep, and yep. lead these mines around. That's the only respawning thing here in this stage. So, <coughs> thousand points too. That's actually yeah, it's kind of lucrative. Good amount for of a psycho game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For a psycho game. <coughs> I mean, the nice thing about the milking in Psycho games is that you still have to do things. It's not like Garaga, for example, in you know stage three, you just sit there. Yeah. But in this, you actually still have to dodge bullet pants. Here we go. Yeah. That's an enrage. That's a suicide. He's gonna. Oh, pick him that's so weird. Okay. If you notice, he hasn't actually lost. Yeah, a he life. hasn't lost a life. Yeah. That that's is... actually really crazy. Yeah. Wow. How tight is the timing on that? Very tight. Yeah. Very very tight. Um, it's not frame perfect, but you do need to know exactly when the boss is going to do its suicide attack, okay. when to crash into it. Um, sometimes you might not get a lucky pattern and you end up missing the power-ups as you go past. 
Um, but as time goes on, you actually spew more power-ups. Yeah. Which is really funny because later, later stages, you actually release like six, seven, eight, nine power-ups and a couple of bombs. Interesting. Um, so you'll actually see it a lot more in later stages. Um, but it's actually not easy to learn to do that because you need to be, you need to know the boss patterns basically and know exactly when it's about to time out yeah. and be in the right place at the right time. It, in a lot of ways it reminds me of the resurrection trick in Garega or Ibarra. Yes. Um, but in, it implemented in a slightly different way. Yes. Yeah. It's actually funny how the game doesn't actually um, set your life count when you do that because you die at a time when you're supposed to be transitioning off the screen. That's basically what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So it thinks, oh, you're not dead yet. So it spawns you anyway. You go shooting up the screen, picking up your stuff, and you've still got two lives. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. It's really weird. I don't know how they actually managed to discover that trick, but since then, people have been trying to do it in all of the other Psycho games as well. And I think ah. some of the latest, later Strikers games actually do that as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 1999 does it. I think Dragon Blaze does it as well. Uh, it's pretty funny how it works. It's actually surprising they didn't fix it, because I don't think they actually realized you could do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. it's I feel like... It, Definitely not intentional. Yeah, it's not intentional. It doesn't <laughs> feel like it at all. It's, yeah. So yeah, bosses, again, the air bosses are straightforward. You're just going to be trying to phase into a form where you can dodge the patterns quite easily. And also milk these small drones here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Although it looks like he's trying to do consistent damage here. Yes. Is, is that because this boss is particularly dangerous or just... I think he's just timing when he's going to oh, die, basically. Oh, just when he's going to die. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, probably trying to line it up with an attack that yeah. that lets him go up there pretty cleanly. There we go. I think it's possible to do a double KO kill as well, though. There we go, no, he's going for the kill there. Okay. Nice and safe. He's going for as many points as possible. <coughs> Got the hand towel there. <laughs> Nicely placed as well. Yeah. Always nice and neat. Yeah, so this is the first of the non-randomized stages, basically. Um, and it's tough. It is actually very, very tricky, this, because these tanks are not weak at all. They take a lot of damage. Um, the thing about the Flying Pancake is that even though it's the fastest and it's got the best sub weapon, it doesn't do as much damage as, say, you know, the Hayate, for example, or the Spitfire. It's like, it's quite weak in terms of how much damage it does. Even with the laser? Yes, even with the laser. So you need to use your charge weapon more often in order to do uh, as much damage as the other ships. So that's why gauge management is actually very important in this game. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I do believe he's using auto fire. He is, yes. Um, yeah. I don't know exactly what the frequency is, but I remember that was part of the hardware setup was that the auto fire board was uh, interfering with the sync signal that was coming out to the capture hardware. Uh, really? Yeah, because wow. the, the the auto fire board is synced to the refresh rate of the monitor. That's uh, yeah. that's how it knows how to like when to push the buttons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's a reco they're using, isn't it? Uh, I actually I don't think it is. Is it not? Oh, it must be something else then. It it, it may be, but I, it doesn't. The board looks a little different to me than the oh, normal right. reco board. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you saw before I was mentioning that you can milk this boss here. Two rail tanks on each side, you're basically sweeping left to right to destroy them as they spawn. This yeah. boss is annoying though, it's got a lot of screen coverage bullet patterns. Yeah, it's tough. But he's purposely going to delay it to destroy the respawn, uh, respawning drones. The reason why there's respawning drones is so that you can't sit in safe spots in these patterns. Yeah. Mm. Um, but obviously you can exploit it by doing this if you know what you're doing yeah <laughs> sort of an interesting like catch 22 there like you know damned if you do damned if you don't yeah 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 so he's actually got a really good score for this stage at the moment 800,000 is around about the highest i've seen so he's doing very well yeah <laughs> yeah this is a two looping game as well i don't think we mentioned so there will be a second loop and the loop is evil yeah, it is. It is really yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I feel like the loop is going to be terrifying with the <laughs> the uh, yeah. 
the popcorn coming in during the bosses because remember the popcorn shoots suicide bullets. Yes. Yes. And they're aimed in random directions. Yeah. yeah. So that's gonna be. <laughs> this is, I mean, a lot of shmubbers will probably be familiar with Cave Second Loop, where you know. Uh, popcorn enemies fire bullets at you in some way. Yeah. In no, strikers, they just fire wherever. <laughs> it's, uh, you have to react to where they're going. It's awful. <laughs> and uh, someone, uh, Zerst in, in chat, the consistency of getting 2K, yeah, it's extremely impressive. Yes. The, the timing on these flashing metals, I, I don't know exactly how small it is, but it's very tight. And he is getting them very, very consistently. Yeah, yeah. Timing's amazingly good. I mean, these guys have been playing this for like years and years and years, so it's what they do. I mean, uh, they very rarely have a bad day, and their bad day is like one of our good days, basically. Uh, yeah. 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 So here you can see. <laughs> Did you just let it push him around? No, no, he's actually. When you, there's a dead zone basically on that boss, so he's purposely leading it across. So ah. you can actually force more enemies. Makes sense. Safe yeah. spot. Yeah, safe spot. Very nice. Yeah, very, very traditional nice. Psycho safe spot there. Yeah. And I think this boss, you actually do a bit of power downing in here as well. I think actually, it's surprising. I haven't seen him do any, not that much power down. Um, usually you see it a lot. That's actually a nice safe spot that, there as well. Yeah, that's, that's cute. That's a thick set pattern, that one. That's very cute. Yeah, so he's phasing here. Here we go. Yeah, power down. And then a power up wave. Yeah. Again, he's going to power down again. Pick that one up. <laughs> then power down again. Pick that one up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then he's going to power down again and pick that up if we can get up there. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Nice. Yeah. Wow. The only reason he's doing this is so he's spawning more of these little drones to pick up more points. Right. Because he's not actually a max power, so you don't get the 4,000 points for getting surplus power-ups. Yeah. It's just for the drones, basically. Tiny optimization. World, rec world record level optimization, this. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're killing it off there, 1 million. So I think around about 1.2, 1.3 million is a very good score for the first loop. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Here we go. Yeah, this stage is actually quite scary here. He's doing it again. You can actually do it in stage as well. Yeah. Does powering down affect rank? No. <laughs> I don't I, think... I don't think there is rank in this game. There's survival rank, but not actual okay. rank rank that we're, we were discussing the last time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. In the previous game. This is like just 100% survival rank. Yeah. Um, so, powering down does nothing besides give you more power-ups to work with and more enemies to kill. That's it. Okay. Yeah, this boss was actually in Strikers 1. Yeah it, yeah, it is. Yeah, I remember yeah. this guy. Yeah, yeah, this boss was in Strikers one. Uh, oh, so they brought it back for this one. It's like on scaffolding. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice little nod to the previous game. There's a lot of bullet hurting in this as well as you see. Yeah, definitely. This is a really tough section to get your metal zone because you need to. Wow, that consistency. Time hold chunks wow. of them. Yeah. Oh wow, that is. Oh, he missed Just one. He missed, he missed one. Yeah. There you go. Dropping one is not a problem, though. He's <laughs> going to make it up elsewhere. Yeah. And again, since it's not an actual chain, it's yeah. gonna be, you just lose 2,000 points. Yeah. The long-term repercussions are not that yeah. dramatic. Powered down once there, because another set of enemies appeared straight after it. And he's going to power up to max here, I think, and then start powering down again, I think. Maybe. He's leaving them on purpose. Oh, geez, that's so scary risky. to do this. Yeah, this is pretty... This that's is a little risky, bad. like the way he's doing right there. I mean, it's essentially a static pattern, this, but anything can go wrong if your timing is off. Yeah. It's basically go to the side, dodge to the side, yeah. go back to the middle. But yeah, again, this the timing is just so consistent. Yeah. Is he going for them at all? Yeah, he's going to be milking some mines on this boss, if I remember as well. There we go, power down yeah, again. There we go, power down. Oh, interesting. Nice is there safe spot right is there. there. no collision? Yeah. Nice. Wow, that is a, that is a psycho pattern. Power up. <laughs> yeah, the scatter mines are evil in this. Oh my gosh. Classic psycho boss with the uh, instant lasers there as well. 
little sensitive. Sorry. No, no, it's all right. I uh, I just tried to tweak the mic a little bit. It, let me know if that's any better. Sorry. No, it's all good. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, is he gonna? I think this one. No, he's not. Yeah. Just go for a kill. I Just have seen the um, the suicide timeout on this as well. Wiping down the panel again. Yeah, this is. It's interesting because there's like there's almost not that much to talk about because the execution is just so on point. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm so curious about the second loop though. That is probably just going to be absolutely nuts. This is the last stage as well, so yeah, the loop is going to be crazy. Though. Loop is it's it's something to see. Basically, <laughs> if you haven't seen a striker's run, this loop is insane. Yeah, it's it's something else. I saw him practicing a little bit yesterday. It's yeah. it's something else. <laughs> This is the mid boss, yeah. Nice power down, like right yeah. there. Power and again. Down. And again. And again. Pick that up. Yeah, you don't want to Middle power down space spot, jeez. Power down again. Yeah. Oh, man. Just the knowledge of patterns is what. Yeah. The, the, just like knowing exactly where to be yeah. and exactly when to be there. I think he probably wants to stay at max for this boss as well. That bit's quite good. Alright, so the last boss for the first loop. There's a lot of static hands in this. Especially when it does a clap on the next floor. It's always fun to watch. You see a lot of people panicking in that. When the, the save the spot clap. is right in the middle. Yeah. 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 The save spot's right in the middle. <laughs> so here we go, second floor. Okay, the clap. After this. Thank oh, it's like a giant lobster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that pattern, if yeah, yeah. you don't know what's going on, that would be it very scary. scary yeah. You just sit in the middle. Third floor. Well, part of what's kind of counterintuitive about it is since it's reaching forward into the middle, you kind of expect forward into the middle to be exactly where you don't yeah. want to be. It's very misleading, that pattern, that's why. But when you see it afterwards, it's like, okay, that's how it's happening. Just yeah. sit there, follow it along. Oh, so, wow, this is a little uh, terrifying looking. Yeah. Last four. <coughs> Tap dodging in this one. Yeah, very nice. It's not strictly static though. Yeah, I was gonna say this. This looks like there's some variation. Yeah. Just the speed and density with which that's yeah. coming. I mean, again, this is a this is a psycho game. This is that's not a small hitbox. So that's first loop. Here we go. Prepare for some uh, some complete bullshit, guys. <laughs> this loop is. <laughs> Uh, and this is the so are there twenty medals in each stage? Yes. So I think you missed two. Yeah. There's a bunch in that stage, oh yeah. So. But like I said, is there any loots in this? Do you do a good job? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I think one point five is really good, yeah. I'm sorry? What? Oh no, like yeah, I just remember how like strikers one, if you do well in the first loop you get like a loot image. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's in the second Yeah, loop. I don't think it's in this one, nah. No. Oh man, look at look at this. This is Yeah. It's already like so much crazier. And then larger enemies spray like four to five bullets at you. <laughs> yeah. As well. So you've got all this random Zacco suicide bullets coming at you. Oh, and even still, even doing the power down stuff. Yeah. And then this middle, yeah, fires a four way at you. Yeah. Fires a four way at you. It's. Oh my god. Oh my god. Little tiny charge there, just to just to clear everything out. And then coming into the boss. And the worst thing about the loop is that the boss patterns are faster, so they come out further as well. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah, so that, that is gap fast. Is not, in a, not an easy place to access. Especially not with the with the drones there now also shooting at you much more actively. Yeah. 
and so it's like any safe zones are like just not yeah available anymore well or they're not so they're safe there anymore. but they're so much harder to get to because the drones are so much more active now wow um a banana matic we do not have a crowd cam unfortunately um we are actually located behind the stage so even if I had a, a webcam that I could point at the audience, I physically am not able to do that. I could go take a picture real quick. Uh, actually, that, that would actually be cool, yeah. If you want to. I'll be right back. Firstly, first stage, well, second, first stage done. Yep. I saw power on that. Did he do a suicide kill there? I don't Maybe. think he did. Maybe I just missed it. Yeah, I saw power up there. Possibly, possibly not. I don't know. I think the boss dropped it. This stage is actually probably the worst stage in the loop because oh. you've got the boats and everything. All these bike lanes, huge bombers. Like, it's, it's a horrible stage to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the the suicide bullets are yeah. really... They just go everywhere. Yeah, it's just all over the place. Like It's not like a suicide bullet, per se. It's like between one, two, and three bullets that it fires, I think. Right. And in random directions. So again, you still... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, you're too quiet now, Icarus. Oh, boy. All right, how's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Decent crowd. Uh, decent crowd, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan, this is what fun looks like. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is something. Oh so, man! Yeah, this that, is that turret. Evil. Oh my god! Oh wow! Wow. This is the worst kind of spam as well. You don't know where it's going, basically. You have to react to everything. Yeah. Wow. Wow. There's just like so much crap on the screen. <laughs> like. And that's the downside to playing as the flying pancake as well, because it's got homing shot. Yeah, right. Which means you're destroying everything, basically, that in is places true, yeah. where you don't want it to be destroyed. Yeah. I mean, with like other ships as well, you can basically time where you plan. You can plan where you destroy things, and you know, time it very carefully. With this, you just lasers everywhere. Oh, it's destroyed! Oh, here comes suicide bullets! Crap! What am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's the price you pay, I guess. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And again, still not a single death to this point. Yeah, this is very clean at the moment. It's yeah. Some of these spreads are just like, oh, wow. Whoa. Suicide. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. there you go. Wow. Oh, wow. Same suicide again, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so that probably was a suicide at the end of the first boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, there's a little trick you can do in this game where if you suicide just after the boss times out, the game doesn't register that death. But it kills you, respawns you, and you can pick up all of the power-ups that you spawn, which is really funny. And plus you spawn at maximum power as well, so you're getting all of those points. Yeah. You it's said it's what, 4,000 to pick up a yeah, power-up at max much, points? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's ridiculous how much you get from that. Yeah. Wow, the speed. Oh. Oh my gosh. I yeah, this stage is those. awful. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's hard to even see what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah, you essentially have to treat most of these patterns as static patterns. Yeah. In order to get through something like that. Wow. Oh, look at that, yeah. Wow. That's 100% macro that. You need to yeah. macro the entire yeah. pattern like that. That is that is so clean, though. I mean. Yeah, that's a strict route, I would think, as well, though. He's doing that basically by the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> is he going to go for the mine milk? Yes, he is. Of course he is. Of I course mean, he is. What, what would this run be? Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's take on a little bit longer to kill, too. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. 
This is where he did the suicide the last loop too, so I wonder if Yeah, do I think it here. he's going for that as well. Yeah. I would think so. Oh, side, yeah. Nah, get, oh. Nice. Oh my god. Full power when respawned. He's got all that of those bomb so points crazy. as well. So wow. 10,000 points per excess bomb. 4,000 so points per excess shot power up. It's crazy how much points you get from that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's extremely impressive. Yeah, and he hasn't bombed at all yet either. Yeah. This is still bombless as well. Yeah. Bombless, deathless. Yeah. yeah, no no actual deaths. Yeah, no actual deaths. That's, that's insane. So, I noticed though that he still only has three lives. Is there only one extend in this game? One score extend, yeah, 600,000 points. Oh wow, okay. I think it's the same with all Psycho games actually. One much, score yeah. based extend, that's it. Okay. No no item extends at all. Right. So it's like very, very tight this. Very, yes. very tight. Oh, uh. Just th those <laughs> turrets are horrible to get. This is like stage two, uh, loop two, stage four as well, so they're super aggressive. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. And what really amazes me is that he went through the first loop without doing the suicide trick. So far, he's three for three in the loop for suicide tricks. Is he going to go for the entire lot? Whoa, around the world! Actually, it makes sense to do the entire lot because you get the points from the excess bombs. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. This, this is entire, yeah, this macro just, dodging this the whole thing. Ar around the world macro. Just <laughs> Whoa, that is that is really dense. Ooh, that cut. Oh, the oh, kiting. Oh god. <laughs> cut, yeah. I, and even like this, he's still like milking more waves. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so this is now it's fixed patterns, but the, the movement changes it up. Yes, correct? it does, yeah. Yeah, wow. Jesus Christ. So this is still, there's some element of, of yeah. reaction to this. The thing about oh. the thing about Psycho is that as the stages go on and you go through more of them, oh. the amount of bullets fired is higher, the, the speed of them is higher, uh, the frequency of the patterns is higher as well. So this is like the, the hardest you'll see, this boss. And yeah. I think this is probably one of the hardest bosses in the game. As Look well, at this. Like, just for these kind of patterns. Yeah, it's just, it's so fast, and then it, it's on top of something that sort of persists on the screen for long yeah. enough that you have to, you have to think about just how those intersect. Yeah. No suicide <laughs> I just there. How he always like cleans the, yeah. Always wipes down the thing after each stage. Would there even have been a way what to suicide chance? there? Possibly, yes. I think he's going for safety though. Okay. Uh, that's, oh, that spray! Oh, it's like every time I see him dodge something, it's like oh. <laughs> yeah, these these bombers just don't give a shit. They spray bullets everywhere, and the turrets are just like lightning. Like yeah, oh. that's how fast the bullets are on this. It's like some Raiden tier like sniper tank. Essentially, yeah. I mean, I think Psycho has some of the fastest bullets in shooter maps. Um, Raiden, when you get to around loop 4 or 5, are really fast as well, but nowhere near as fast as this for a second loop. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's going to milk these as well, so the two, the, the two tanks that spawn on the diagonal rails just endlessly respawn after you destroy them, and he's milking them in the second loop. <laughs> yeah. With all this stuff going on. <laughs> like, no, zero fucks given. <laughs> zero fucks given, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's like how casual he looks too. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just completely, completely living in this moment. <laughs> like, exactly where he needs to be. Oh my god. This boss is awful as well, just for oh, these patterns. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I would say it's partially static, but the drones don't make anything easy in this at all. Yeah. Yeah, if, if it weren't for the drones, so much of the patterns would be once you learn the pattern, you're good. You, know, yeah. you never have to think about it again. Yeah. And you can see he knows exactly where to be in each point as well. Right. It's like he moves along and then suddenly stops and he knows. And he no! Oh! Oh! Okay. Oh, oh, that changes things a little bit. Yeah. 
So the rank will, will go down now, correct? A little bit, yes. Ooh. That was not intentional, obviously, so that's... It's not unfortunate, but he can he can do this, I mean, it's I, fine. It's, yeah, it's still going to be an insane yeah. run, so... Just means that suiciding probably is off the table now, because he won't be getting the bomb capacity bonus either. Ah, okay. Yeah. So how much does that impact his score now that if he's not getting the bomb bonus? Well, if he was going for absolute maximum score, he'd be suiciding on every boss, which means at least another 20, 30,000 points. Okay. Um, and then there's the bomb cap bonus at the end of the game as well, which I think is pretty lucrative. I think it's like 100,000 per bomb, if I remember correctly. I think oh, wow. so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So there's a lot there. Most Psycho players want to finish the game without bombing at all. Um, obviously for the bomb cap bonus in-game, and also for the bomb cap bonus at the end of the game. Right. Yeah, so it's crazy how much that you get for that. Oh, oh that spread that, that just happened. so <laughs> oh, fast. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you need to destroy that one on the left. And this is, a, this is a not the max rank, presumably. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You have to misdirect this turret, because yeah. you see how fast that's coming out. Yeah, I, I mean, so yeah, you, if that's at you, I guess maybe there's a safe spot in it, but... There's not. No? Believe me, I've seen enough replays to see that there's not there. You have to misdirect that. Okay. It's impossible to avoid otherwise. Oh, I love that that's still there, though. Yeah, that bomb is, I'm going to say it's slightly forced. Yeah. Because that section is not easy to deal with. Yeah, I imagine. Wow. <laughs> Oh man. Left, right cutbacks. Yep, just just simple cutbacks. Just just easy. Yeah. Easy stuff. Yeah. Except not. So, is this gonna be a speed kill? Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the attack patterns are generally in a fixed order though. So once you learn the order it's easy to do. So right claw first, then left turret. Right. And then he's gonna do point down and shoot with the right arm there. And then then the both, the, yeah, and then repeat ad infinitum. It's yeah, punch, yep, boom, punch gun, punch down and shoot downwards. Yep, then boom, yeah. So there is a general rhythm to this that you can learn. Um, for the most part, all bosses are always like that. There's very, very little randomness to them at all. Um, when you play the later striker games like um, 1999, it's even more pronounced because you get the technical bonus as well. So if you learn the boss patterns as you go through. Um, you can get a nice little bonus at the end of it by killing the boss at very specific points for the tech bonus. Yeah. So it's very nice that actually. Uh, Strikers 999 is actually a very good game for beginners to pick up I find in terms of Psycho games because there's a lot in it that makes it a little bit easier to play but there's still the classic Strikers challenge in that as well. Mm. It's a very good game to play I like, definitely. I like it quite a lot compared to a lot of the Psycho games though. and most people who know me know I'm very, I'm very critical of Strikers games and Psycho in general, just because they're like, you know, very, they're very formulaic, I'm going to put it as. Yeah. Yeah. This boss actually appeared in Strikers 1945-1 as well. I think it was the snow stage with the trains, if I remember correctly, because, yeah, you can do the same thing here. And this, yeah. is, a, this is a different boss than the one different that was there boss. before. Yeah, I yeah. think this is the stage where it has different, like, random mini-bosses. Yeah. Like, That's striker yes. games have that. Yeah. That's in some cute. stages, the mini-bosses are randomized based on the position on screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, depending on where you oh. are on screen. Ooh, that, ta that tank. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so I, depending I didn't even see what happened. Killed him. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't either. He just died. I think he was in a bomb too. Yeah. Maybe just as it ended. Wow. Yeah, 1999 is much easier, Banana. It's funny because the X36 is based on the flying pancake in 1999, so you play it in exactly the same way. Ah, okay. Same thing he's doing here, he's just going to misdirect all these patterns, use shot to damage it. Ah, uh, okay, um, Pan Pan 2DX, yeah, that may have been a, a max charge. Yeah. My bad. I don't know, it's still a very intense, yeah. intense run at this point. I think he's going to probably play safe now. Yeah. The 
worst thing about this boss is the instant lasers. Ah. Oh. Yeah, there, oh, there we go. So yep. we're on the last stage now. Yep. Here it goes. Oh my Whoa. god, the speed! <laughs> wow. And still going for twen uh, 2k medals, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You have to misdirect that, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Hello. Okay, there we go. Full charge. Yeah. 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 Th I think it erases bullets, though. It does, yes. yes. Yeah. God, that speed, though. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Still doing the power down. <laughs> oh, wow. Of course he will. <laughs> oh, man. Although I guess so far this this mid boss doesn't seem to have changed all that much. It's not much, no. Some of the patterns are a little bit faster, but you can still safely do this, safely to a point. I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at, at this level, it's still safe. Yeah. 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 Think? I would not be doing this at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. It's interesting to think it might be easier for him to do it this way than to actually do it normally. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, every time these things come on screen, I'm just yeah, like... Yeah, they're the worst oh. at this stage. Man. Okay. Last boss. Here I we don't go. think there's a TLB, so I don't think we need to worry about that. Yeah. There very rarely is in a Psycho game. So the, the design of this thing reminds me a bit of... Um, uh, Gorgonion from yes. Uh, is, do you think that's an intentional reference to this game, or Reminds to Strikers? Possibly uh, the last boss, uh, one of the bosses in Crimson Clover. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does yeah. look like it a little bit. Yeah. Not not this form, but just that first form yeah, the first with the, form, the, the spherical like ball and the cables. And, oh God, these patterns. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is just it's still fixed. So as long as you know it. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's also very timing based as well. So. Yep. Yep. Oh. Nope. So fast. Nice. Almost there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Is that a safe spot? I. It seems like it may have been a safe spot. Yeah. Wow. Just right at the center. What, what if, if it's a safe spot? What a free win. Wow. Wow. Fucking free boss. There you go. The end. The end. Wow. Wow. Okay, so 3.28. You said the, the world record's in the four range? Something like that, yeah. Wow. Okay. And, I mean, and what? Two or three hundred thousand of that is just from the, the yeah. bomb bonus, right? So where are the other optimizations? Do you, do you even know? Mainly suiciding, like yep. we saw before, powering yep. down, like we saw before, and just milking the hell out of the game. Okay, and so just even more abusive than that even already more was. Abusive, yeah, I mean, we saw a small glimpse of it there, and that was 3.2. Yeah. If you want to see just how far it's taken, watch, see if you can find the world record or close to the world record because it goes to extreme lengths in terms of scoring for that. That's how optimized Strikers 945.2 is. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I can imagine. Yeah. Wow, uh, that was that was incredibly cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I do not know if the uh, if if Waisaita will be able to come over here and talk with us. Um, I, I, there was some discussion of that maybe happening, but um, it sounds like the players do not speak English at all. Um, and I don't think we have an interpreter that speaks English. I think the interpreter only Besides speaks plasma. French. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like plasma or eaglet or something, we we could work something out, but it would probably yeah. be a little awkward. Yeah. So. Now the deck. But um. Yeah. I don't. Is that going out now? Like on this. Yeah. Uh, uh, Banana Matic in chat is asking about the Dejica announcement. I, I know nothing. I don't. I don't know anything about on, is going what on? that is, when it is, where it is. Um. Yeah. Watching the the main stage feed right now. Yeah, it looks like doesn't look much. Oh, uh, I think is Matthew gonna be helping out with translation, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Well, he's talking to a uh, Saito there, so possibly, maybe. Would that be in in French though? 
No, he he knows how to speak English. Oh, okay, then yeah, then yeah. then maybe he will come over here. Yeah, that would so be awesome. Might be coming over, maybe. No, it looks like it. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and the the crazy gift soup. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We have a uh, we have a guest. Oh. Hello. Aaron will translate. Okay. Okay. Um, here. Uh, we, we have a, another mic if you want. Yes. Good. You said on the stage that you were you were very stressed and you were started checking. Hello. About the beginning of the tour. Uh, do you have any any comments about the run? Like, how did you feel as you were playing? あ、どうもあの、なんかこのプレイ終わって何思いますかの感想は聞かせていただけませんか正直に言うとあの、ほっとしました。安心しました。はい。あの、なんとかクリアすることができたので。あ、so uh, I'm very relieved to to be honest, I'm very relieved to have uh, cleared the game. Yeah, very, very understandable. The the end there, it looks so intense. That that whole second loop just looks so intense. なんかこの二周目はすごく激しくてもう衝撃的な、あの、熱感があって。Let me really quickly ask: Are there any questions from from chat? Um, if you guys have have anything, I will try to try to ask that. Um. なんかチャットの質問があるかどうかを見てみます。So the up until very late in the loop, you know, it was with no deaths, no bombs, no mistakes of any kind. How how did that feel when that death happened there? Um, how did did that change how you were playing or how you were approaching the the stages to come? なんか結構遅くまであの。死なずにボンボン使わずに進んで、で結局死んだ時はなんかどう思いました？集中力切れたりとか。えっと一番最初にあの死んでしまった時はあの二の五のボスで死んだんですけど、そこで死んじゃうとあのその次の二の六の面の
、えー、ともうやりたいことはもうほとんどやってしまったのでうーん、まあ、あと、今あのフライングパンケーキを、まあ、できたらまあ1万点ぐらい伸ばしたいかなぐらいですね。はい uh, so I, I've done basically what I wanted to do with this game almost、uh, entirely.、Um, I just want to、uh, have maybe 10,000 more points with the flying pancake and I will be satisfied. Wow, okay.、Uh, one, one moment, let me just check the, the other channel.、Ah, yeah, it looks like there's no more questions.、Um, wow. So, what is your. What is your favorite experience with this game? Is there like one moment that, that really stands out? or? game is the most important thing to do with the game. What is the most important thing to do with the game? I was able to do it in the m i d ゲームやってること自体でその緊張するとか感動するっていうのがもうあまりなくなってしまいました。Well, at first I had a few spots I really、uh, was stressed or enjoying, but after playing it for so long, now I think all the, the stress or all the、like、emotional parts have disappeared. And... So, would you say it's almost、uh, meditative now in a way? Like if, if you're sort of If the emotion has disappeared, is it just something you play to relax almost? You're asking me difficult terms to translate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Zen, like, you may be able to do it, like, relax. そうですねリ,リラックスするのが一番やっててあのい,いい結果が出るので、はい、緊張だけはしちゃいけないんですけどやっぱりあのさっきのああいう場だとやっぱちょっとあの人にみんなに見られてるんでやっぱそれでちょっと<笑>あのスーパープレッシャーですね。Well, usually I can、uh, relax、uh, actually quite a lot and that's how I get very good results but、uh, in, in front of a big audience like here Yeah. Uh, I cannot help but feeling a bit、uh, some pressure and making some mistakes. Yeah, of, of course. A, a live audience is just, it's so different. It's so, it feels so different.、Um, did, uh, did you have to do any specific preparation for this run? Like for this live event run? いただいて、あとまああのー、連射装置ってわかりますか？連射装置、はい。あれをあのー、日本から、えー、持参しました。まあ、まあ、それぐらいです。So I I actually asked for a few days off、uh, from my company to practice a bit more,、oh, wow. uh, and also I brought with me my auto fire、ah. to have、uh, my usual setup.、Uh, speaking of usual setup. I remember、um, last night there w a s some issues with the version of the board being slightly different.、Um, was that fixed? Were, were you able to play on the version that felt normal to you? Yes,、uh, today was actually the, the like a, a foreign version, which is actually a bit more difficult than the Japanese one. Oh, wow, okay. So I had to practice on that. Wow, so incredibly impressive then that you even made it as far as 2.5 without any mistakes, knowing that this was a more difficult version. I'm glad some, it, it worked somehow. <laughs>、yeah. um, what is the, the SGG culture like in Japan? Do the players hang out with each other? Do you share ideas? In Japan, the shooting game is a lot of people who are in the world. How do you share it? 
、うん、私は、はい、あの昔からあの同じくやってる方がいらっしゃるので、うんまあ、それでよくお話ししたりはします。So, yes, I have, I have a friend、uh, with whom I've been playing for a long time and we talk a lot. Cool.、Um, Chad is also asking、um, Do you, having now tried French breakfast, do you prefer French breakfast or Japanese breakfast? Now, I'm going to say, France no breakfast, and I'm going to say, France no and Nihon no a s a g o h a n are the two. ごめんなさい日本です。<笑> Sorry, but I prefer the Japanese one. <笑>けどあのあれあのチキンビーフーあといろいろなんかあとデザートとかあの食べたんですけどすごく美味しかったです。はいあのなんか食べたことないようなあのなんか揚げ揚げたパン、うん、もうなんかすごいちょっと感動しました。<笑>はい、I, I ate a lot of、uh, very good、uh, food here in France. So I'm very satisfied. <laughs> oh, okay.、Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm from the United States, so I am not the biggest fan of French food myself.、Uh, but the, the chat is asking, so. <laughs>、um, let's see. Um, uh, someone wants to know do you play any,、um, any games from Cave or from any other of the big、uh, shoot 'em up companies? と最近以外の例えばケーブとかのシューティングゲームをやりますか？えっ、ー、とドドンパチが好きであのー、かなりやってましたはいえっ、ー、と一応あの二、ー、周クリアはあのー、し,しました、うん、初代ドドンパチ初代はいノーマルですであのー、なんかあのー、明日あのーなんか入るみたいなんで、あのちょっとプレイしようかなと思ってます。あのあの,あのフリープレイ代。ああ、はい。So I actually、uh, love Dodon Pachi and I cleared the second loop of the first Dodon Pachi. Oh wow! And、uh, it seems、uh, this game will be put on the free play、uh, cabs tomorrow. I I hope I will be able to play there. Oh cool! Yeah, very, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that.、Um, let's see. What has your experience been like of, of this event? Is it interesting to see how the Western community approaches、uh, shoot 'em ups? このスタンフェストの感想はなんか特に日本と違いものがあったりとか。日本にあまりこういうのがないので。うんなんかちょっとか悲しいかなーってあのシューティングは、うん、あんまりないんじゃないかなと思いますはいちょっと羨ましいです、oh, I'm actually a bit jealous because there is not really such events、uh, in Japan for shooting in fans so yeah I'm, I'm a bit envious of you oh wow well thank you I think often the sentiment in in here is that we are jealous of Japan because you guys have these Wonderful games and arcades and, and places to actually play them.、Uh, we have to go so far out of our way to, to experience these games. I think ただあの、日本でもゲームセンターがどんどんあの潰れてなくなってしまっているので、意外となんかもうその少ないところに多くの人が集まるような感じになってしまったので、なんか気軽にゲームがアーケードゲームができなくなりました。Yes,、uh, uh, also in, in Japan, the number of、uh, game center is actually decreasing.、Ah. So maybe soon we'll also not have many opportunities to play、uh, ourselves. Ah, that is. I, I heard this from some friends who live in Japan, but it's, it's, very, it's very disheartening.、Uh, but also, I feel like one of the things that I like so much about the Western community is that. Having a harder time to play these games in some ways brings people together.、Um, do you think maybe that will be something that happens in Japan as well? 
この海外にゲ,ゲーセンが少ないので、えー、このゲームシューティングゲームをやるのは難しい、はい、だからこそみんなが集まっているから、はい、日本もそうなるんじゃないかなと<笑>もしかしたらそうなるかもしれません誰かがあの立ち上げてそのやる日が来るかもしれません、oh, Yes, that might be the case、uh, if hopefully someone makes such events in Japan too Um, let me just ask one more time if there's any last questions from, from the chat.、Um, people asking about things like will it be streamed? I, I cannot answer that. I'm sorry.、Uh, I don't know what the hardware setup is like over there.、Um, but in the meantime,、um, are there any kind of any words that you would like to say、uh, for today,、uh, knowing that we'll have another run to talk about、um, in a couple days? Or tomorrow, even, I think? I 何か言いたいものがあったら何でもいい<笑>、うんえーとうん、明日ももっと頑張りますいい結果が出せるようにベストを尽くしますあ、tomorrow I will, I will try to do even better result あ、wow that will be extremely impressive to see、um, and then one, one last question here、uh, do you play Mahjong? じゃあ最後の質問としては Mahjong やりますかマージャン。マージャン。はい。あ、できます。はい、やります。<笑>はい。はい。Yes。he's he's playing it。all right。ah that will make a。僕もやりますので、<笑>じゃあい,いつか。やりましょう。<笑> I make a friend of mine very happy。all right。thank you so much for your time and for the for the amazing performance and I look forward to tomorrow。どうもありがとうございました。明日お,お楽しみしてます。<笑>ありがとうございます。こちらこそありがとうございました。<笑> all right。So that about wraps it up.、Uh, thank you guys so much for watching today.、Uh, we will be back with more coverage tomorrow.、Um, just as a reminder, the complete schedule of the Washoe events is available、uh, here. I'm going to post a link in chat if I can. Oop, there we go.、Uh, so that is, that is a complete list of the Washoe events coming up tomorrow.、Uh, will be Strikers 2 again and the first run of Dodonpachi Daiojo White Label as played by Foo Foo Foo. So, yeah, definitely very exciting stuff to come ahead.、Uh, still, two more full days of content coming up. So, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too.、Um, thanks everyone for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time.